Chicago, Red Miller, walking the sidelines here at Mile High tonight. Will, I'm sure, remember the finish of that game. Beat the Blitz 1916 for their first win. The closing seconds when Miller told quarterback Ken Johnson to take it in from a yard out on fourth down. Craig Morton asked Coach Miller to recall the moment. We had gone 70 yards or 69 yards in five and a half minutes. We had 18 seconds left on the clock. We had one play. Now, we're, am I going to take a chance with my field goal kicker on this bad, bad day of wind and, and field conditions? Am I going to put uh, my squad in jeopardy of, of tying the ball game up and then losing it in overtime or possibly winning it? But now I can win it with one play. And I decided long before we started discussing it that I was going for it on fourth down. Red Miller took the gamble and won. Really, it was probably the only thing to do when you look back upon it as he beat the Chicago Blitz 19-16. to So both clubs are here now at Mile High, and a lot of fans still beginning to come in. We're set for some football. I think the rain's going to let up here. It's, we sense that a little bit. It's about time to play the game, and the man that's going to make the call for you along the line tonight, Fred Manfred, our good friend Craig Morton, the quarterback from Mile High, Denver. Thank you very much, Dan Lovett. Now pop your umbrella up and you can go watch the ball game. We have to bring foul weather gear for the USFL play. Craig Morton must feel like deja vu here, sitting in a at a broadcast booth at Mile High Stadium, a place where you performed so well for so many years. Well, it's a great feeling to be back here. Uh, it is kind of deja vu just to sit here and just to look at it from a different angle. I had an opportunity to go down and talk to Coach Miller before the game and to get in a locker room and not be in there where I've been so many times. Uh, feel kind of strange, but uh, at least they feel good in the morning. <laughs> the knees don't hurt. They, well, they still hurt. But the rest of myself doesn't. Now, last weekend, uh, you had an opportunity to watch this Oakland Ball Club beat Michigan 33-27. Fred Basada had a super evening. The uh, 24 of 30 passes for 341 yards, three touchdowns. Your appraisal of the Oakland Ball Club. Well, he's their strength, there's no question about it. And uh, what uh, Michigan tried to do to him is blitz in, in, in up two times. And Fred was able to read it. He got his receivers behind, and they were, they were uh, able to adjust to that blitz. And he just absolutely killed him. And I don't think that uh, Denver can afford to do the same thing through tonight. Well, the fans, they expect 37,000-plus here tonight in Denver at Mile High Stadium for this ball game. The weather may keep the crowd down just a bit, but we look over at I-25 and the crack between the triple deck. Horseshoe Stadium and the stands that we have to our right, we see the lines still up, the cars still lined up trying to get into the parking lot here at Mile High Stadium. When you point to the right, when you say the stands to your right, you have to be very reverent about that because those are the infamous South Stands of Denver. And anybody that ever sits in there, first of all, has to be one of the more uh, uh, rabid people, but you also have to have uh, all kinds of equipment to protect yourself from the the uh, hoedown that they, they do show there. And one of these times when the weather is improving and Denver starts to running off some good victories, you'll find that uh, the Denver people will support this team and fill this stadium. But Denver Gold will receive the kickoff. They are wearing black and gold, look very much like the Pittsburgh Steelers in their uniforms tonight. The Oakland Invaders wearing invader blue and gold. Basically, their uniform being on the road will be the white uniform. We have a prescription athletic turf field here, and Craig Morton will elaborate about how well that field holds water and pumps water out. We'll go into that a little bit later, but you can hear the fans at Mile High Stadium. Number 17 on his uniform. Back deep is Lonel Fee standing at the goal line for the Denver goal. Kevin Shea, 6'2, 198 pounds, a first year pro out of St. Mary's. He's had tries with the Rams and the Oakland Raiders. Officiating tonight, Bill White, the umpire, is the referee. The umpire is John Bradley. Bad lineman Richard Lavelle, the line judge Curtis Decker, the back judge Grover Clummer, the field judge Bill Schmitz. Football game is about to get underway. Kevin Shea receives permission to kick it off. The soccer style kicker approaches the ball high. Coming up to the three yard line is Fee. Fee over the 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, to the 35 yard line. Ronald Fee straight up the center of the field. It'll be first and 10 for the Denver goal. Nice way to start the ball game. He, he uh, took that ball by the goal line, five yard line, went right up the middle. They had great blocking. Now Denver gets a chance to uh, get good field position on their initial drive. 
quarterbacking for the Denver Gold. We have Ken Johnson. He'll start with Harry Sidney and Bo Matthews in his backfield. Lonel Fee will be a wide receiver. Vic James also a wide receiver. And Bob Nazolik is the tight end. Lonel Fee, a two-year pro out of Houston, wide to the left side and in tight right side. Now going wide right is Vic James. Kenny Johnson, a hero of last week's victory in Chicago. Pitches to the right side. With the back of football is Harry Sidney. Turns the corner to the 40. Up to the 45. Driven out of bounds at the 47-yard line. Far across the field by the outside linebacker, David Shaw. A rookie out of that school that we will hear an awful lot about tonight. California. You know a lot about Cal, Craig Morton. Well, you love those sturdy golden bears. they got about uh, seven or eight of them on both sides. So uh, the bears have always been known to play good football. You know that, Fred. Harry Sidney, the rookie, I should say the two-year pro out of Kansas. A great run. Picks up the first down. It'll be first and ten for the Denver Gold from their own 46-yard line. Ken Johnson, nine-year pro out of Colorado. Most of his time up in the CFL with Calgary and Montreal. Sends two wide receivers left side. Stacked to the eye behind Johnson on the first and ten. Gives it to his deep back. Again, Sidney. Sidney over the midfield strike. Has another first down. He's down to the 43-yard line of the Oakland Invaders. Dewey McLean, the outside linebacker, finally wrapped him up there. But Sidney gets off the ball quickly. Picks up another first down for the Denver Gold. This is the type of thing that Red Miller loves to do in starting a ball game. He's basically a conservative coach, and uh, if he can get his running game going with those big guys up front, they're doing a heck of a job right now, and the fullback made a great block. Uh, he'll keep that ball on the ground to eat up that time and, and try to get some good field position to keep the, the ball game in his control. Just underway, Mile High Stadium, no score. Denver Gold with the football. They have it at the 43 of the Oakland Invaders. Receivers split wide right, wide left, back split behind Ken Johnson in the backfield. Johnson likes to throw to those backs. Hands off again to Sidney. Sidney cuts up at the 40. He's to the 35. Down at the 33 yard line. That offensive line is tearing them apart right now. And you have to give credit to the center, Tom Davis, their left guard, Glenn Hyde, who uh, did a great trap block that time. Uh, when you can gain 10 to 15 yards of crack, uh, there's not much more you can do better than that. Another first down for the Denver Gold. You can hear the fans. They're revved and ready for football here in the Mile High City. They always are. You know, you've seen that the uh, gold uniforms look like the Pittsburgh uh, Steelers, and you have to look at that offensive line. Uh, they're, they're men because they don't wear any sweatshirts. <laughs> they got those muscles showing. Von LP wide to the left. Now we have the back shift. Slot to the left side this time. Johnson, waiting, gives off again to Harry Sidney. Sidney knifes his way over the 30, down to about the 26-yard line. Frank Matamata Oda, like on the tackle with Dewey McLean. Matamata Oda, San Jose State, started his college career at UCLA, then transferred. He's 6'2", 245 pounds, four-year pro. Dewey McLean, East Central Oklahoma was his school, 6'3", 230 pounds, a six-year pro. It's my main man, Frank. I will call him Manamala Una. You can call him Frank. We'll call him what we can call him. Six-yard gain, second and four for the Denver goal from the 26 of Oakland. The back shift. We have two now behind quarterback Kenny Johnson. Slot to the left side. Two wide receivers out there. And in tight right side. Johnson gives off to Bo Matthews. Matthews Great off run. the right side. Has the first down. He gets down to about, we'll call it the 22-yard line. As Frank Manamala Una in on the tackle for the Oakland Invaders, along with Kenny Daniel, the left corner. Should be another Denver goal first down. Before we get any further into the ballgame, Craig, tell us about the prescription athletic term and what effect the rain will have on the play tonight. Well, it, uh, it rained quite hard before the game, but it won't have that much effect right now. It's a great draining system. They have coils underneath that heats the, the grass and it evaporates almost as quickly as it's hitting the grass. So any time I've ever played this field the last four or five years, uh, it's never been a factor in the ball game. First and 10 for the Denver goal from the 21 of Oakland. Receivers put wide right, wide left. Eye behind Johnson in his backfield. Johnson fakes. First pass coming up. Steps up to the 30. Fires the pass complete. At the 20-yard line to his tight end. Down to the 15. Along the near side right. Uh, they're trying to get uh, Denver in a bad position, a bad field position. 
uh, try to get them uh, in a position where they have to do something that they don't want to do. And that time, uh, Kenny Johnson picked up the blitz. And, uh, of course, uh, Bob Nizolik made a great play, and he just bounced that defensive back off and made about 10 yards. And a first down, first and goal to go for the Denver goal from inside the Oakland 10-yard line. Wide to the right side is James. Wide left side, Lonel Fee, the quarterback. Gives off left side. Bo Matthews with the carry, but Frank Manamalaota, we're going to call that name all night, will have it down, enunciated perfectly by the end of the evening. Made the stop for the Oakland Invaders. Little or no gain on the play. Bo Matthews from Colorado, eight-year pro. Played for the Chargers from 74 through 79 and the New York football Giants from 1980 through 81. I just missed him. Shame, shame, shame. Second and ten for Denver. The ball now, the Denver side of the Oakland 10-yard line, but it's still goal to go. On LP, wide left. Receiver going wide to the right side is Howard Ballage. What back split here? Back split behind Johnson. Here the Johnson wants to throw. Quick pop pass to his tight end. Great play by Kenny Johnson. He read the blitz, did a little jump pass. I've seen a jump pass in 10, 15 years. a great drive. That's what uh, every football team loves to do, but there's some, some danger in that, Fred. If you see so many football games where a team starts off and gets so much uh, going that the adrenaline starts flowing, uh, they're happy to be home. They beat Chicago. They're happy to be here again, and they get a good drive. Now the defense can't let up, and they got to get that offense back in the field while they got that adrenaline going. On the slippery field, Brian Spielman will attempt the extra point out of the hold of Reserve quarterback Jeff Napple. The ball is a fake. Napple going for the two points. Fires into the end zone. One point for the Denver goal. I like it. You got to love it. That was a planned play. The pass went to Larry Canada. And Canada puts up two points for the Denver goal to make it eight and nothing. There's a break in the action with the score. Denver eight, Oakland nothing. We'll be back to Mile High Stadium in Denver after this. Back at Mile High Stadium in Denver, Colorado. The rain falls, but the crowd is mile high. Their goal just scoring. Not only a touchdown, but the two-point conversion to give Denver an 8 nothing lead over Oakland. 10.42 to go in the first quarter. The rain's starting to come down harder now, and it'll make it that much more difficult for Bassana to operate with at quarterback for Oakland. Well, that's what uh, Red Miller had planned. He planned to go down the field, score, get the two-point conversion, and then have it start raining hard again. So Red knows how to play this Denver weather. Spielman kicks it off, going into the end zone. The both backs come together in the end zone. Finally, one comes up with it at the 10. Then he gets sold under at the... Confusion as Jerry Aldridge collided with Poncho James back there. Finally, Aldridge took the football, went straight up the field, and it was tackled at the 11-yard line by the Denver goal. It'll be first and 10 for the Oakland Invaders. Would you say that Denver's a, a little excited or a whole bunch excited? A whole bunch excited. Freddie Bassana, the quarterback, 83 attempts, 58 completions, 852 yards. Better than 69% of his passes have been completed. So Bassano with receivers wide right, wide left. His tight end is Raymond Chester, a familiar name to pro football fan. Pitch comes to the right side. Arthur Whittington. Whittington gets outside right, but only a couple of yards as he is tackled by Phil Hansick. Hansick, the right inside linebacker, taking the place of Kyle Whittingham. Whittingham with a bad ankle this evening, Kansik went to Northern Arizona University, a lumberjack. A little bit about Arthur Whittington, went to SMU, six years pro, with the Raiders from 78 to 81, played for the Buffalo Bills at 82. And had a great game last week against the uh, Michigan Panthers. 109 yards on the ground for Whittington. High stack behind Bassana on the second and seven. Bassana gives off straight up. Phil Jancic once again. No pass yet from Bassana. The ball went to Ted Tarosian from Fresno State. Tarosian had a try with the Bills at 82. 
Averaged four and a half yards a carry in college at Fresno. In fact, he's the Bulldogs' second leading all-time rusher. Six foot, 220 pound fullback. It'll be third and six. Masana with receivers wide right and wide left. Chester in tight left side. Masana will throw for the first time tonight. Set the fires to pass. Complete. He has his back. Arthur Whittington. Whittington along the near side. Has the first down. Goes over the 25, 30. Run out of bounds at the 35. Maybe the 37-yard line of Oakland by David Martin, the right cornerback. And Arthur Whittington on the year. Came into tonight's ball game with 12 pass receptions for 120 yards, and he picked up a big chunk that time for a first down for Oakland. Well, we heard John Ralston say before the game that uh, Fred Masada has a great touch of the football, and he certainly did that time because if he had a two inches lower and John Bearfield, their outside linebacker, the goal would have gone the other way. So it was a great pass, and uh, it got him out of a big hole. Freddy Masada, one of the long line of quarterbacks to make pro football from the University of California, down behind his center. Roger Lavasa. Masada will throw on the first and ten. Looks downfield. Fires over the middle. Complete the Raven Chester at the midfield strike. Chester to the 45. To the 40. Fumble down at the 36-yard line of the Denver goal. Raymond Chester, the 13-year pro veteran from Morgan State right outside of Baltimore, finally tackled by left quarterback Will Lewis. Well, the thing that made that possible is that every quarterback will tell you is if he's got enough time, he's going to hit his, his uh, primary receiver. That time, his primary receiver is covered. He went back and... Uh, you got a big guy like Chester across the middle. There's not too many guys are going to defend against him, especially when you try to tackle him low, and you saw what happened that time. 7.49 to go, first quarter. 8 to nothing, Denver with the lead. The Oakland Invaders on the attack. Wyatt Henderson, the two-year pro out of Fresno State, wide right. Receiver wide to the left side is Gordon Banks. Masada gives off to Whittington. Whittington escapes one tackler in the backfield, but if he tries to get outside along the, the right side, he is tackled there by left outside linebacker John Bearfield. And Laval Short, the nose tackle, also in on the stop for the Denver goal. We'll call it no gain, second and ten for the Oakland Invaders from the 36-yard line of the Denver Golden. The rain continues to fall here at Mile High, but despite the rain, a pretty fair crowd on hand for tonight's ball game. I think they're still coming in too, Fred. David Dumars, the strong safety goal, made that play uh, possible to, to stop when he had time. Mallet wide to the right side. Coming to the near side now is Wyatt Henderson. Persona back to throw. Some pressure rolls to the right. Outlets it to Tarosi to pull back. Tarosi does not get back line of scrimmage on the right side. He has tumbled down at the line of scrimmage by the left defensive end, Larry White, the rookie who went to Jackson State, and that was just an outlet pass. Vasana really didn't have anybody to go to. It looked like the receivers were covered downfield, and he went to his man out of the backfield. The goal did a good job of covering everybody, and I think that uh, probably Freddy Vasana just uh, came off receivers too, too fast because he had some pressure and he got out of the pocket, but he was lucky to get the ball off, and they... They did get almost back to the line of scrimmage. Fasano this year has been sacked 13 times. And the key statistic there, as we talked, is that he's only had one interception. So that's, you'll take the sack rather than throw the interception. Third and 11 from the 37 of Denver for Oakland. Fasano will throw. He's in the midfield. He is back for the 14th time this year. Bill Hampton, the right inside linebacker, starting through to make the initial hit. And then he was joined by several of his fellow teammates for the Denver goal. And 23 for the Oakland Invaders, and the Invaders will send in Stan Talley, their 6'5", 225 pounds, first year pro out of TCU to pump the ball. He averages 43 yards a kick. Lone safety back for the Denver goal is Dave Martin. Martin standing at the 10. You can bet Talley will go for the corner. Talley hangs it high, going to the left side. The ball will bounce out of bounds. A great run. I'll tell you what, it's going to be right on about the three-yard line. The ball angled exactly for that left coffin corner, and Van Talley hit it there, and it will be first and ten for the Denver goal from their own three-yard line. Well, there's a timeout on the field with a score. Denver 8, Oakland nothing. You're listening to USFL football. This is the ABC radio. Well, guess what? Following that great punt, an ineligible man downfield for Oakland, so Talley will punt again. He's going for the corner again. The ball will hit at the 15, roll to the 10, to the 5, and it's batted down at the one-yard line. 
super play by the Oakland Invaders and running downfield to touch the ball was Quinn for the Oakland Invaders and instead of the ball being on the three-yard line, it appears it's going to be on the two-yard line and maybe we have another problem coming up against the Oakland Invaders because there's a big confab going on down near the left corner of the end zone. They're calling it was a touchback, and he was in the end zone by the time he batted it back. Well, I have to say it's a bad call. Well, Quinn was down there quickly. It looked like he touched it at about the one, but the officials saw it differently, so the ball will be placed at the 20-yard line where it'll be first and 10 for the Denver goal and is starting to rain even harder here in Denver. Well, there's a timeout on the playing field with a score. Denver 8, Oakland nothing back to Mile High Stadium in Denver after this. Well, on the first and ten for the Denver goal from their own 20, a handoff on the left side to Bo Matthews. He gained a couple of yards. Then, on the second and eighth, the handoff went left side again. Harry Sidney brought it up to near the necessary yardage for the first down, so it'll be third down and a short one for the Denver goal. The ball placed at the Oakland side of the 29-yard line. So it'll be third and short yardage from the 29 of Denver for the goal. Double end, tight end set up here, bookends. Wing now on the right side for Denver. Kenny Johnson with back split behind him in the backfield. Gives off to his bread and butter pile driving back, Larry Canada. And Canada has enough yardage for the first down. He moves it over the 30 to about the 31 yard line before Frank Manamalaona made the stop for Oakland along with Ed Taylor. It's, it's going to be very difficult to stop the mailman, as we used to call him when he played with the Broncos. Larry Canada's about six foot three, probably weighs now. I looked at him in the locker room. I don't know what he's. Uh, he says he weighs uh, 225. I would doubt it. I'd say maybe 240, 245. Larry Canada never made a weigh in in his life. <laughs> so, uh, he's uh, cost him a lot of dough the last few years. Three minutes exactly remaining in the first quarter. Eight to nothing. Denver with a lead and with a football. They have it first and ten from their own 31. Receiver split wide right, wide left. Eye behind quarterback Ken Johnson. Johnson has a man in motion now. Pitches right side to Harry Sidney. Sidney outside right at the 35. To the 40. To the 45. And he is pulled out from behind after getting the first down at the 49-yard line of Denver. Getting it from behind the right defensive end, Cedric Hartman, a 13-year veteran. 6'4", 245 pounds, but Harry Sidney is impressing this Monday night as Kelvin Bryant did for Philadelphia last Monday night. He's, he's had a great game so far. Uh, Oakland cannot try to force in that type of play with the, the defensive halfback. If they do, then he's just going to get uh, run over by the guard, and he turns around field. Sidney's turned up field twice in that same play. Uh, the first time he gained about uh, 10, this time he gained about 15 or 20, so I would suggest that they use that strong safety a little bit more. Ballage wide to the right side, Fee wide left, one back behind Johnson, wing on the left side for Denver for first and ten from their own, 49, handoff straight up the middle, Larry Canada toting the fixed skid into Oakland territory down to about the 47-yard line, Lonnie Green, a right defensive end out of Mississippi State with a stop for Oakland, Larry Canada, as uh, Craig Morton mentioned, a four-year veteran with the Denver Broncos, Came into the ball game averaging better than three yards a carry. He also has made eight pass receptions for 43 yards. Well, Red's offense is designed a lot to throw the fullback, and here comes a torrential rain. I mean, this is really coming down now. Four-yard game for Canada sets up a second and six for Denver from the 47 of Oakland. Slot to the left side, end in tight right side. Johnson with back foot behind him. Gives all to Larry Canada, and Canada is greeted rather rudely at the midfield stripe. The mail was a little late that time. Now Larry Canada was stuck by David Shaw, the rookie from Cal Berkeley. Why not? Must be a good school. All these guys like to play football there. Roger Theater was uh, coaching now. Joe Cap and, of course, uh, Mike Great. White was there. Mike White, uh, coach of Illinois now. Uh, right to school there. Craig Morton went to school there, as everyone knows. Well, as everyone forgot. Forgot. Third and seven now for Denver from the 48-yard line of Oakland. Slot to the left side. End in tight right. Back split behind Kenny Johnson. Johnson. On the third down play, drops the throw, sets up, has the pressure, drops it off to Canada. Canada to midfield strike, to the 40, at the first down, at the 39-yard line of the Oakland Invaders before he 
he finally stopped by Eddie Taylor, but we talked about Larry Canada being a pass receiver, and what do they that, do? Uh, nice little screen pass. He's probably caught most of his passes on his screen, but he made about six or seven yards on his own that time. He just took that ball and headed up. He outraced the guard, and he made it on his own. We will also see coming out of that backfield that I am for Denver, Terry Miller. That's the young man who was odd man out for the New Jersey Generals. And there's the guard ending the first quarter with his score. Denver 8, Oakland nothing. This is the ABC Radio Network. High football, Mile High Stadium in very wet Denver. Fred Manfred, Dan Lovett, and Craig Morton here to bring you the ball game. Windy and wet is the story. 8 to nothing is the score. Oakland trailing Denver. Denver with a football and stations. We were shy. One network commercial timeout in the first quarter. We'll make it up during the first timeout within the second quarter. And thank you. First and ten. And for Denver, this is spring football. Spring. First and ten for Denver from the 39 of Oakland. Slot to the left side. Johnson gives up. Terry Miller for the first carry tonight. Left side, Dewey McLean, the inside uh, linebacker for Oakland, made the stop. Terry Miller out of Oklahoma State, 5'10", 190-pound, four-year man. Talking about Miller's, uh, Michigan Panthers made an announcement today that they signed Cleo Miller, a seven-and-a-half-year veteran with the Browns and played nine years in the NFL, so a three-year guaranteed contract. Uh, he must be celebrating tonight. Checking his bank account to everything else. And I think we're going to hear a little bit from him at halftime. Well, I'm sure that uh, that will help Mr. Anthony Carter having a big back like that. Michigan is lacking a little bit of the running game, and I think that uh, I'm sure Mr. Cleo Miller will help him greatly. Second and nine now for Denver from the 38. of Oakland receiver wide right. Now man in motion to the left side is Terry Miller. Johnson back to throw. Looking, rolling to the right side. He may tuck it and go. He dances at the 40. Ooh. Now to the 37. <laughs> and Craig Martin lets you know what happened to him at the time. Bonnie Green and Dewey McLean got him, and we have a flag down. Maybe a little extracurricular activity going on. Uh, very definitely. They said, we don't like you, number seven, to come around here. Don't be foolish enough to even try to get around our end. Craig Martin, what does that do to you when you see your quarterback get absolutely hammered? My shoulders start hurting. You know, it's a funny thing. It's not really a funny thing. Is that you come around that end, and you think you're so strong and powerful, and you look up, and the linebackers are laughing. And they're saying, come on, we'll just treat you very nicely. And I think they always give you just a little added nudge. And that cost them about 15 yards that it added one, I think. So the ball will be marked from the 34 to the 30 to the 25, down to the 19-yard line of the Oakland Invaders. First and 10 for the Denver Gold, who lead 8 to nothing. We have 13.58 to go. In this first half of action from rainy, wet, Mile High Stadium, and that's getting to be a cliche in the USFL, saying rainy and wet. Harry Sidney in the first quarter, six carries for 60 yards. Not that average. Well, we'll have to expect him to do 240 yards. He did that in one quarter. Double tight ends now. Going wide to the left side is Ron L.P. Slot left is Vic James. High behind Ken Johnson in the backfield. Pitch to the right side. Coming is Terry Miller to the 20. Miller to the 16 yard line. Gain of about three. Gary Plummer, the inside linebacker from the University of California, made the stop. Uh, that play was designated for a big loss, but and Tom Davis, the uh, goal center, came around and made a great block to enable him to at least make two yards. So give the credit to Tom Davis, the center, for making that play a plus. Second and seven now for the Denver goal. The ball on the 16 yard line of the Oakland Invaders. Denver, of course, coached by Red Miller, a very familiar name here in the Mile High City. You know, you, you look at Red Miller, he got his start in pro coaching as an assistant with the old AFL Boston Patriots. And he was even here with the old uh, Denver Broncos in the early days. On the second and seven, Johnson goes!
just coming down in sheets here at Mile High Stadium. The fans and the stands having fun. You might hear their, their feet pounding against the cement here, urging the goal to score again. And in tight right side, wing left side, quarterback Ken Johnson on this first and goal to go from the eight-yard line of Oakland. Johnson dropping the throw, looking into the end zone. Lost the pass. And oh. complete, almost intercepted. Diving, trying to make the interception was Kenny Daniel. The ball was intended for the tight end, Tom Mayer. However, it was overthrown, and Kenny Daniel from San Jose State went diving at the six-yard line just off his fingertips. Uh, that ball had to slip out of his hands a little bit because uh, it was a little overthrown, wouldn't you say? A little. <laughs> but then again, we don't know about that football, how tacky it is at yeah. the point or how slippery. Well, with this rain coming down, it may be just a little wet, but uh, one of the good rules that the United States Football League has is the referee is covering the football, and I think they've outlined it. Against him. The wind is a little bit against him. 
uh, the scores against him, I don't want to be in there. When, as a quarterback or a coach, do you say, hey, we have to alter our game plan and try to play catch up here? Well, it's a little too early for that. I think the key thing is that it's 15 to nothing and they got that extra point because of the two-point conversion, and that puts them in a bad position because they got to, if they score, they're going to either have to go for uh, the two-point or they're going to have to get two scores in a, in a, uh, a field goal to get them in a, in a position where they're ahead. So right now they've got to stick their game plan. They've only had one drive and they got down there and then they got trapped. So I would say just keep going with the game plan. Well, they marked the ball at the 18-yard line of Oakland. First and 10 for the Invaders. Basano with a receiver wide to the right side, receiver near left. Now Raymond Chester switches from left to right to tight end. Back splitting behind the quarterback in the backfield. Basano will throw. made a tremendous scramble, came out, threw for about 30 yards, and he got, uh, somebody got caught roughing him, I think. Personal yep. foul. Yep, they roughed the quarterback, and you did not want to touch that quarterback. They had to know better than that. Great catch that time by Wyatt Henderson. Henderson sliding to make the reception. Henderson already coming into the ball game with 12 pass catches on the season, 264 yards, and he's already scored five touchdowns this season. Wyatt Henderson from Fresno State. I told the defensive lineman for 18 years not to hit me extra hard, and they never learned. And here's what it will cost the Denver goal. The ball is being marked from the 45 in the Denver territory to the Denver 40-yard line. That's a 45-yard play. With the penalty. They get you right out of the get you right in a good position now where they get right back to the ball game. The rain continues, and would you believe this afternoon the weathermen on radio were saying a 30% chance of showers? Well, that's what they know about weather around here. <laughs> Wyatt Henderson, wide, wide, right. Gordon Banks, wide to the left side. Banks split behind Basada. Basada fakes a handoff, looks downfield. not to uh, take the penalty here. They uh, got him for about a six-yard loss. Uh, maybe they ought to take the down. Bill uh, Schoen talking things over with the officials, and we'll get uh, their decision. Showed along with John Bearfield talking, holding the call. Declined, as you said. Well, that's a wise choice. They don't, uh, they'd rather take the down. They, they got him for a six-yard loss. That was another instance for uh, Freddie Bassana. He could have thrown the ball up, but more than likely, uh, his receivers were covered. That could have been intercepted. Uh, he'd rather just take the loss and uh, try again on the next play, and he's excellent doing that. Wyatt Henderson, wide to the right side. End in tight, left side. End in tight, right side. Bookends for the Oakland Invaders. Now, Gordon Banks comes off the tight end slot, moves wide to the left side. Sonner drops the throw on the second and 15. Dumps it off over the middle. Complete for Raymond Chester. Chester with blockers in front of him. Over the 45 to the 40. Down to the 35-yard line of Denver. Ricky Harr, a one-year pro from Colorado State, made the stop finally for the Denver goal. But there's the Raymond Chester, the big guy who runs so hard and who played so many fine seasons with the Oakland Raiders and the Baltimore Colts. Four-time pro bowler. And it sets up a third now and just four for Oakland from the 34-yard line of the Denver goal. The speedster, Henderson, wide to the right side. Banks, wide left. Banks, split behind. Masada in the backfield. Freddy will throw. Drops back to 49 over the middle. Complete the bank for the first down. Flag down at the 40-yard line. But Banks made the reception. As he made that reception, he was greeted unmercifully by John Merrifield and Rob. three times now. Now there's a timeout on the field. You're listening to USFL football. This is the ABC staff. 15 to nothing. Denver leads Oakland. Oakland with a football at the 44-yard line of the Denver Gold. However, the penalty of holding will cost the Gold, uh, I should say the Invaders, 
yardage because Raymond Chester had brought the ball up to within four yards of the of first down. However, following the holding penalty, it's third and 14 now for Oakland. And while we were away, the uh, PA announcer here announced that Craig Morton was doing the game over ABC Radio, and a big cheer came out of this Mile High Stadium. Pisana with a third and 14. Drops the throw as he has receivers wide, right, wide, left. Fires a pass over the middle. Great go. Great to Ronnie Mallett for the first down at the 25-yard line, and Mallett is hit and dropped there by Tom Sullivan. I'm just continually amazed about Fred Pisana's accuracy and his ability to pick up people. That was probably his third receiver. I know he's looking first to Raymond Chester. He had enough time that time to come back and hit a guy right across the middle. Uh, it, you know, he picked up some first downs, get him a great field position again. The guy's got a great arm. First and 10 for Oakland from the 24 of Denver. Angles it, and it goes out of bounds. 
Did it go off before? Uh, amazing punch. <laughs> at the two or three yard line. Well, there's a timeout on the field with a score. Denver 15. Oakland nothing. Okay, 15 to nothing is the score here at Denver. The gold on top of the Oakland Invaders. It'll be first and 10 for the Denver goal from their own six-yard line. Ken Johnson, who has thrown two touchdown passes tonight, sends the receiver wide to the right side, end in tight left. Big James is the receiver wide right. He has back split behind him in the backfield. Hand off around the right side to Terry Miller. Miller up over the five to about the 10-yard line before he is hammered down by... David Jefferson from Miami of Florida and David Shaw, both outside linebackers. Let's pause for station identification. A gain of four yards by Terry Miller sets up a second and six for the Denver Gold from their own 10 yard line. Terry Miller, quite an interesting guy, he has a Bachelor of Science degree in finance and he has a pilot's license. And in here, huh? Wide to the left side, we have a receiver. And in tight right side. Backs two of them behind quarterback Ken Johnson. Johnson gives off right side to Larry Canada. Canada, by the form of the blocks of Ron Hussauer and Doug Huppick, brings the ball up close to the necessary yardage for the first down. And he may have it, depending on where the official spots the ball. Frank Matamalaola, along with Dean Moore, making the tackle for the Oakland Invaders. We're going to have a third down and short yardage situation for the Denver Gold. Looks like they have the ball placed at about the 16-yard line. The official covering that football with a towel. It's raining in Denver. Uh, not as hard as it was earlier in the ball game, but it's still coming down pretty good. Third and one for the Gold. On their own 15-yard line. Ends in tight, right and left. Split backs behind the quarterback, Johnson. Johnson, the quarterback keeper, has the first down, I think. Looks like he banged it to the 16. Of course, the center of that Oakland defensive line doing everything in their power to jam up any hole, and we get the side from the official. First down, Denver goal. you got to love it to do that quarterback sneak, you know? Take quite a beating. I used to love it every chance I got it. So let's do that quarterback sneak again. I'm sure some of your enemies on the team said, okay, Craig, do it. <laughs> Receivers coming in now for the Denver goal. Vic James and Lonel Fee, two flyers, coming out of the ball game. tight end, Tom Mayer. So, on this first and ten situation from the 17-yard line of Denver, the goal for the football. Fee wide to the left side. James now coming from right to left in motion. Quarterback. Johnson gets off, trying to go off the right guard. He gets the ball to the 17-yard line, does Terry Miller. And Dean Moore, the two-year pro from the University of Iowa, made the stop. Moore, 6'2", 225 pounder. That is looking to a good play, but uh, Glenn Hyde, the pulling guard, the left pulling guard came around, slipped, and uh, the back had no place to go. You mentioned the slippery uh, turf. It has been raining, but the PAT has done a remarkably good job in keeping this field in it's pretty still good playing shape. condition. Still in great shape. We say PAT, Prescription Athletic Turf. Natural surface. Wide left is a receiver, wide right. Eye stacked behind Ken Johnson on the second of eight from the Denver 19-yard line for the goal. Hand off to the fullback, Canada. As Canada hits there, the line is a flag down. He got up to the 23-yard line. Well, Denver's going to be one Terry Miller with that. Carry. Yes, Terry Miller uh, running the ball. He got about three yards, but Denver's caught for holding. And David Shaw made the stop, but really the big stop was made by the hole. Yes. So the ball about his fair play, right? The ball will be marched back. Of course, uh, Craig alluding to the fact that uh, Oakland has been plagued by several penalties this season. Very costly penalties. It's uh, taken them out of scoring position the two times they've had the ball. This is those penalties. Not only has the traps hurt them, but the penalties lead up to those traps because they're forced to throw the football. 4.45 to go first half. Mile High Stadium, Denver, Colorado. Brett Manfred, Dan Lovett, and Craig Morton here bringing you the football game tonight between the Denver Gold and the Oakland Invaders. Denver up 15 to nothing with the football. However, they have a long yardage situation here. The ball marks back to the nine-yard line of the Gold. It'll be second... Very, 
very long yardage. They have to get the ball up to the, it appears from here as we look across the field, to about the 18-yard line. If I was a quarterback here, I'd have to go deep because they're anticipating a blitz. I think that Oakland wants to get that ball back, so they're going to put a lot of pressure to try to even get it further in the hole. There's no harm to put that ball up uh, while I start the snow. Uh, oh, it's snow, rain, everything here in Denver. Now we'll see what Ken Johnson can do. Second and 18 for Denver from their nine-yard line. He has receivers split wide right, wide left, and in tight right side. Lone set back behind him in the backfield. He gives off to that back. Terry Miller coming up. Miller will not have the first down. He gets it to the 16-yard line, and he is stopped. Dean Moore, the Hawkeye from Iowa, made the stop for the Oakland Invaders. I called, there was Bo Matthews on the carry that time. I saw the, the number four, and Terry Miller wears 43, Bo Matthews 41. However, it's going to be shy of the necessary yardage, setting up a third and 12 for Denver from their own 15-yard line. Here comes their prevent defense, or as everybody calls it, a nickelback. Some call it dime. Depends how many defensive backs in there. It looks like they have five defensive backs now, so we'll call it a nickel defense. We have Miller and Matthews in the backfield behind Johnson. Receivers wide right, wide left for 10 on his third and 12 from his own 15. The Denver Gold quarterback pitches right side to Miller. He escapes one tackler, cuts back, gets up to the 20, stumbles oh, nice forward to the 23 yard line, but he's going to be shy of the first down by a good three yards. He was tripped up by Marcus Quinn. Setting up in the game late. <laughs> Setting up the putting situation for Steve Gortz. Steve Gortz. From Nevada, Las Vegas, a running rebel. Yes, uh, he tried out for the Broncos a, a number of times, and I'm glad to see he's finally found a home. Averaging 38 yards a kick. We have a lone man back for the Oakland Invaders here at the 41-yard line. Gortz will get the ball away from his own 10. Steve 6'2", 210 pounder, awaits the snap, gets a good one, handles the ball well, powers the kick, and I mean he hits it deep. Oh, Billy Bubbles. Goes back to football. Oh, at the 26-yard line of Oakland. Billy Hansen couldn't handle the punt. There is some trouble, though, Fred. There's a flag down in the football field, and it probably means that Denver was downfield illegally. So maybe Oakland will get a break this time. Big James down quickly to make the fumble recovery, but as Craig Morton tells you, a flag back. That's exactly what it is. Ineligible man. Uh, oh, man in downfield. And that penalty affected Oakland earlier in the ball game on a beautiful Cali Coffin corner kick. Turnabout fair play. Uh, once again, only this was really a crucial play for Denver. They'd have the ball in the 28-yard line looking for another score. Uh, a very good break for Oakland. Very good break. 3-0-3 to go in the first half. 15 to nothing. Denver leading Oakland. And now Oakland may get the football in pretty good field position following that penalty. The ball will be placed down at the 17-yard line of the Denver goal. Yancey has a second chance. He has a chance to make amends for the fumble now. Since that fumble was negated by the penalty against the Denver goal. And Gortz will kick the ball away from about his five-yard line. That's a great break for Oakland. As we said just a little earlier, uh, if they don't uh, get the ball this time, if a Denver goes in and, and scores again, the game's about over in this kind of weather. But now once you, uh, once you get, they get a chance, maybe get the football fed to Sano, who's about six or six, seven or seven, come in and maybe give him a score before the halftime. Yancey standing back at the Oakland 43-yard line. Gortz will kick away from his own five. Wet football raining here in Denver. Fourth and ten for the goal from their own 17. They're snapping back. Gortz slips and he kicks it. End over ender. Takes a Denver bounce and goes out of bounds. No, it doesn't. It just rolls. It goes the sideline, far side, and rolls dead at about the Oakland 37-yard line where it'll be first and ten for the Invaders. I imagine that to Red Miller telling Gortz, check those cleats, will you? Gortz uh, led a charmed life that time because he went flat on his keister after kicking the football on the slippery turf, but the ball took a nice bounce. He had nice form, though. Good form. Yes. 10-0 on form. Yeah, definitely 10-0. He has taken some ballard 
ballerina lessons with that one. If you had a little tootsie on, you could... Uh, tootsie or tutu? Well, I'd like to call it tootsie. <laughs> tootsie. He landed on his tootsie. 46 yards on that good roll for Gortz. So it'll be first and ten for the Oakland Invaders. The ball marked at their 36-yard line. Craig Morton, you have a nice halftime coming up. Dan Lovett will be here momentarily as we watch the snow fall here in Mile High, Denver. Craig, you had a chance to talk to your old Super Bowl coach. I have talked to Red in about uh, two and a half, three years, and it was nice seeing him again. Uh, he's still excitable, Red. Uh, he's so excited about coaching football again, and it's nice to see him back in the game. Of course, we're speaking of Red Miller. The coach of the Denver Gold. And of course, uh, both John Ralston and Red Miller left uh, the Broncos under somewhat less than happy circumstances. Yeah, they both did. It was unfortunate in both circumstances. Maybe we'll have a chance to talk about it later. Of course, John Ralston coaching the Oakland Invaders tonight. Wide to the right side is Wyatt Henderson. Wide left side, Gordon Banks. Banks split behind Bassana on the first and ten from the Oakland 36. Bassana will throw. Looking. Plenty of time. Fires the pass. Complete. The Banks for a first down at the 48-yard line. The Denver Gold signaling no catch. However, Banks went down on both knees. Went low, scooped it before it hit the natural surface here at Mile High Stadium and made the reception. They better stop complaining and get back in their defense because Oakland's in their hurry-up offense and trying to get to, down there and get the score before the time runs out. First and ten for Oakland. From the 49 of the invaders, Bassano will throw again. Plenty of time over the middle. Complete to Arthur Whittington. Whittington running right over the 45 of Denver. Out of bounds at the 44-yard line. David Barton finally running him out. However, Whittington circled out of the backfield. Bassano waiting for someone to clear long. Didn't have the receiver open. Then dumped it off over the line of scrimmage to Whittington, who took it from there. He made a great job getting out of bounds. He had two guys hit him, and that guy's got, got to have some great strong legs, Fred. I mean, his legs would be, be so strong for him to get out of bounds, taking the ball in the middle of the field, being able to bounce off about three or four different people and getting out of bounds to stop the clock with 2.13 left in the half. Second and three now. A seven-yard gain on that pass to Whittington. The ball at the 44 of the Denver goal. Oakland trailing in the football game, 15 to nothing. Banks wide to the left side. Henderson wide right. Back split behind Basada. Basada drops the throw. Steps up at his 48. Lops a pass. Incomplete. Off the hands of the intended receiver, Pancho James. Hanging all over James, however, was Ricky Haar. And Haar did a good job of stopping that pass completion. It was a great defensive play. Uh, once again, it was a great throw, too, though. The ball was right in his hands, and it just bounced off. But uh, even if he had caught the ball, he probably would have gained one or two yards. I have been very impressed with Freddie Bassana's touch on the pass. Rightly so. I think he's got great touch. I don't care if they would have signed John Elway or Dan Fouts or whoever. They would have beat Freddie Bassana out for the Oakland Invaders. It's amazing how a guy can play semi-pro football for several seasons, not be heard of, and then all of a sudden get his day in the sun and show like Freddie Bassana has. Well, he's shining. Third and three for Oakland from the 44 of Denver. Bassano wants to throw. He has pressure. Roll, roll right. He's in the 45 and he's going to be caught. At the 45-yard line of Oakland. Larry White and Laval Short chasing it. Finally, pulling him down, Larry White. Well, he's a timeout defense playing sack back tonight. Four sacks for the goal defense. 46 yards and losses against Oakland. However, Freddie Bassana having a super night through the air. Eight of nine for 125 yards. Get to that offensive line protected a little bit more. Uh, he'll be even more effective. So it will be a fourth and 15 for the Oakland Invaders from the 44-yard line of Oakland following that sack. Back deep, David Martin. For the Denver goal, Martin standing at the 13-yard line, and Stan Pally, who has punted so well tonight for Oakland, will try to get all of it and hang it out now because he'll be kicking from his own 31 or 32-yard line. The ball will be snapped from the 44 of Oakland. Both safety back is Martin standing at the 13. Pally awaiting the snap. The rain continues to fall in Denver. The ball is back. Pally gets it. Hangs it high. Turns over. The ball will hit and bury itself at the five, and oh. now it takes the bounce into the end zone touchback. I thought that ball was going to hit nose down and stop. Looked like it was going to bury itself like a torpedo or a bomb. Just lands right on the ground and stays there. Another great kick. So it'll be a first and 
That's about a 56 yard punt. It'll be first down and uh, 10 for the Denver Gold from their 20 yard line. We have one minute and 46 seconds to play in this first half here at Mile High Stadium in Denver. One thing we might mention in the final two minutes of the half of the game, uh, the clock stops with each first down. It's uh, a rule taken out of the college rule book, and it's, I think it's a good one because uh, there's so much confusion. It gives everybody a chance to, uh, to uh, get reset. It doesn't give the referees that much of a, uh, a judgment call because a lot of guys sometimes, after they trap the quarterback, will just kind of meander back, and the ju uh, judgment of the referee has become very difficult. This allows the referee just a little bit more of a rule-type game, and I think it's a good rule. Well, Dan Lovett has sidled up alongside of uh, Craig Morton and uh, Danny will have the halftime show for you and an excellent job Dan Lovett does at halftime on these Monday night USFL football games and Dan I'm, I'm kind of anxious to hear what Mr. Morton has to say to Red Miller at halftime well it's uh, an in in interesting conversation for sure Fred it was nice being down in the locker room with Craig as he talked to his old coach and I tell you not to get too melancholy about it but these two guys embraced and they're uh, you know, there's such a great association over all these years when he played here in Denver. Big James wide to the right side. Wide to the left side is one LP. The back split behind him in the backfield for Kenny Johnson. First and 10 for Denver from their 20. And off to Larry Canada. Canada spinning as he hits the 25-yard line. Gary Plummer and Dean Moore make the tackle for the Oakland Invaders. Dean Moore from the University of Iowa played for the San Francisco 49ers in 1978. He had a try with the Vikings in 1980. A gain of five for the big back Larry Canada, a Badger from the University of Wisconsin. We're going to have a timeout call as Kenny Johnson comes over to talk to his coach, Red Miller. You know, we talked about Freddie Bassana, even though Denver has the the football now. Freddie Bassana has been the outstanding quarterback so far in the United States Football League. And Craig, you know, Bassana has a master's degree in education. And uh, he owns a beer distributorship in Northern California, an insurance business. And while he was establishing those businesses, he was playing for the Twin Cities Cougars up in Yuba, California, the Cal League. And uh, he told us he had a lot of fun. All he wanted to do was play football. He didn't care whether he was getting paid. I think he was getting like $50 a game up there. And he said he had such great fun. And his old coach from the Twin Cities Cougars is an assistant for John Ralston at Oakland and mentioned to John, you know, I've got this kid, Freddie Basada. And Ralston said, well, I know about Freddie Basada. I, I saw him play four semi-pro games. I think he's got a chance. Let's bring him into camp. And Ralston gave him a lot of encouragement, a lot of confidence. And Freddie Basada has, has shown in the USF. Well, that's why John Ralston is considered a wise coach. They say John Ralston was a player's coach. Is that correct? Well, of course, I never played for him, but uh, the people that played for him, he's, uh, he doesn't uh, become very active in the coaching on the field, but uh, he always says that he, he loves the game so much that he respects his assistant coaches enough to teach them to teach his players. So I think that's a great trait of a good coach. So quarterback Ken Johnson for Denver, second and five for the goal, and they're all 25. And Clay Rule, and I mean a big defensive end. And the flag went down. Rule, 263 pounds. It tries with the Saints and the NFL and the Rough Riders in the CFL. And we're going to have a march off against the Oakland Invaders. The ball started at 25, over the 30 to the 35. It'll be a, at the 40-yard line, first and 10 for the Denver goal from their own 40-yard line. We have one minute and 34 seconds to go in the first half. Mile High Stadium, Denver. Rain back to us. We had a bit of sprinkling of uh, rain intermixed with snow. Typical USFL football weather. Spring time in the Rockies, huh, Craig? Uh, that's exactly what we're having. Four feet of snow a couple weeks ago. Anybody that can forecast 50% here is considered an expert. <laughs> James wide to the right side, B left side, I stack behind Ken Johnson in the backfield. Johnson now has James in motion. Pitch comes to Terry oh, Fuller. He is left down and the ball loose. Terry Fuller was just decapitated by Dewey McLean. Dewey McLean going in there, getting his arm out and just wrapping it around the neck of Terry Miller 
and Miller is down flat on his back. I wish people could see that play. If you want to know why it uh, takes a pretty tough person to play this game, that is the main reason. You won't see a hit any harder than that any time you ever see or watch a football game. Listen, I we have seen some hits yes. out here tonight. These That's guys are true. playing serious yeah. football. Well, this is an important game for Denver. You know, if they win this game, there's a four-way tie in their conference for the, uh, the lead. So they'll all be tied with two and two records. So I'm sure that's foremost in their mind. They get away with a victory here. They're back in first place, tied with four, the three other teams, and it starts all over again. So Terry Miller, the 5'10", 190-pound, four-year pro. He's about 5'4", now, about 135 after that hit. Uh, I think he has, uh, it looks like he's uh, holding his, his mouth there. And I, as I said, I think the, the invader got that uh, forearm right across the chops. Feels so good. <laughs> Feels so good. 122 to go, first half. Denver's Mile High Stadium. Fred Batford, Greg Morton, and Dan Lovett. 15 to nothing. The Denver Gold leading the Oakland Invaders. Denver with a football. Second and 17 on their own 33 yard line. Receiver wide right, wide left. Howard Ballage wide to the right side. We have Fee wide to the left side. Ken Johnson, long count. The look to throw, rolling to the right side. Johnson motioning his receiver downfield. So Hobbs a pass intended for the tight end, Bob Nizolik. However, Nizolik did not expect the pass. The ball went sailing over his head. Nizolik just watched it kind of float over his head. And now Nizolik is having a few words to say with a member of the Oakland Invaders. And one of the foolish assistant coaches is having a word to say, too. He's liable to get popped, and he won't be assistant coaching very much longer. No reason to get angry with your opposition. The game is a gentleman's game. We play this by gentleman's rules. <laughs> One fifteen to go. First half of this action. Ken Johnson has thrown two touchdown passes tonight for the Denver Gold, and the Gold lead fifteen to nothing. Wide to the right side, the speedster from Colorado, Vic James. Wide to the left side, Lonel Fee. Back split behind Ken Johnson on the third and seventeen. Johnson now has Canada come directly behind him. Gives off to Larry on the left side. And Larry, with the, the body close to the ground, pile drives up over the 35 to the 36. And Frank Manamaluna made the stop for Oakland. And we're going to have a fourth down punting situation for the Denver Gold with 108 to go in the first half. You know, Fred, the uh, fans, as you look about the stadium here at Mile High Stadium in Denver, they still love their football. If the rain has let up a little bit, they've had a good dose of it most of the night. I'm guessing, Craig, you probably have a better idea looking about the stadium as far as the attendance is concerned. This might turn out to be the best crowd of the USFL weekend here in Denver. I wouldn't doubt that at all. And they've had bad weather. Well, it's not going to stop Denver people. They, they, they're accustomed to being outdoor people. They're, everything they do is outdoors, and especially with the weather we've been having the last couple months, uh, this is not going to deter them. And there's been a lot of things written in the paper, whether they're going to support the gold or not support it. And, uh, Denver takes these things as challenges, and they get out and support their teams. And uh, this is a good example with this horrible weather that so many people have come out. Billy Yancey will go back deep as the lone safety for the Oakland Invaders. He'll stand at his 15-yard line. Steve Gortz, who had a beautiful kick uh, called back by a penalty, and then who kicked off balance, went sliding on the wet turf here at uh, Mile High Stadium, but still punted the ball for 46 yards the last time. And he's 2-2. We'll try, <laughs> we'll try to get the ball away again. And, gentlemen, I do believe the rain has stopped at Mile High Stadium. Letting up for sure. Snow next. Sleet, <laughs> hail, anything. Steve Gortz will kick away from his 26-yard line. He's standing back at the 22, but by the time he takes his steps, he'll get it away from the 26. Yancey back at the 15 of Oakland. The ball is back. The kick is a low liner. The ball will bounce at the 25 to the 20 of Oakland. Yancey having trouble picking it up. Finally gets it. A blue one back on that. having some problems handling that football. The initial hit made by Larry Canada. And if I remember correctly, Larry played on special teams for the Denver Broncos. Yeah, he sure did. He's a great, he's a good football player. And at one time, uh, he was uh, one of our leading carriers with the Broncos, but they're just 
You know, as time marches on, younger people come in, and I can tell you about the younger people. Well, doesn't Red Miller like the big, maybe not speedy back, but the guy who usually hangs on to the football, keeps it low to the ground, and just piles on it? With Red's offense, you need a big fullback. First and 10 for the Oakland Invaders from the 15-yard line. They're all receiver wide, right, wide left. Back split behind Fred Bassano, who's had a super evening. Bassano gives off to the near side on a draw to Arthur Whittington. Whittington up over the 15, 20, 25, out of bounds at the 29-yard line. Bassano dropped back to throw, almost like the old Statue That's of Liberty. Liberty. That's exactly what it was. Tommy Sullivan, the free safety, ran Arthur Whittington out along the near sideline for a first down, however, for the Oakland Invaders. And this... 50 seconds left. Uh, there's the he, the Fred Bassano with 50 seconds can do about anything. So uh, they still have a chance to get the ball in the end zone or at least kick a field goal and get it on the scoreboard, which would be very important to them if they go in the locker room at least three points. Of course, they are trailing 15 to nothing. We speak of the Oakland Invaders who send Wyatt Henderson wide to the right side. Near side left is Gordon Banks. Back split behind Fred Bassano, the 6'4, 210 pound first year pro out of the University of California. Bassana drops the throw, sets up at the 18, pressure, pressure, rolling right, completes the pass, incomplete, Arthur Whittington had it in his hand, dropped it out of bounds, he was hit by David Dumars, however, Whittington should have had that football, we now have 43 seconds to go first half. Well, the defense smelled that out, there, were gonna, there was going to be a screen play, but everybody just followed Whittington, who was uh, going out for the screen pass, and uh, luckily he dropped the ball, he if he had caught it, he would have lost five yards. Second and ten now for the Oakland Invaders, and uh, Steve Gortz having a good night pulling tonight. Forty-five and a half yard average for the young man. It's not bad for Endover and kicks. <laughs> good bounces, <laughs> extremely. Wide to the right side, Wyatt Henderson. Left side, Gordon Banks. Two backs behind Basana in the backfield. Basana will throw. Being pressured. Now he gets away from that pressure. Rolling left side. Fires the pass, complete to Banks. Banks has the first down over the 40, dances up to the 43-yard line, then three of the Denver goal hit him, leading tackler Greg Gerken, along with Nate Miller for the Denver goal, but not before an Oakland Invader first down. Well, here's where this rule is coming into play. The clock is stopped because of the first down. They'll reset the ball, the, the chains will come up and measure the, the first down yardage, and then the referee with his hand will start the clock. This is a good rule. 30 seconds to go in the first half. Clock rolling now. Masano with it first and 10 from his own 43. The Oakland quarterback will throw again. At the 33, fires over the middle. Complete to Tarosian, and Tarosian is tumbled to the ground at the 48-yard line of the Denver Gold by Greg Gerken and Ricky Hard. Tarosian from Fresno State. It's going to be shy of a first down. Nine, eight seconds. Clock rolling down. Masano maybe will get one more playoff. Masano with receivers wide right, wide left. Two seconds on the clock. Drops the throw with no time remaining. Just throw it up for grabs. Well, Just throw it up. Hang it out as he gets some pressure. He is throwing long over the middle and complete. Get his instep into the football. The soccer style kicker bangs it high. Macho James takes it at the 1, to the 5, to the 10, to the 15, to the 20, to the 25, and he is hit down, slashed to the turf at the 27-yard line. Macho James looked like for a minute there he was going to get a little bit of daylight and say goodbye to everybody. However, he was caught and dropped. It'll be first and 10 for the Oakland Invaders from their own 28-yard line. Well, I'm sure Oakland, after halftime uh, ceremonies with John Ralston, is going to come out and try to put something together, get rid of those holding penalties, maybe uh, eliminate a few traps and get something that's going to sustain sustain him and get him down the field, get him some score in the, on the scoreboard. Well, Bassana still at quarterback. Back split behind him in the backfield. Receivers wide right, wide left. Bassana, left side to Whittington, outside at the 30, flag down, out of bounds at the 36-yard line, near side, and you heard Craig Morton in the background calling the bane of every quarterback and every runner who picks up a good chunk of yardage, holding. Well, that was a silly holding penalty. The, uh, the fullback uh, just went up to Ted Tarasian, just uh, went up and he tackled the, an outside linebacker, and the referee's standing right there, so... Uh, referee's not going to miss that one. And, you know, as we're just talking, eliminate the holding penalties, the first thing to do is hold again. And they don't want that. And Fred is probably saying, if you do it again, get out of the huddle. Now, Freddie Bassana in that first half of action, 
10 completions, 14 attempts, 150 yards. Whittington, three carries, 16 yards. Terosian, two carries, two yards for the Oakland Invaders. Whittington, the leading receiver, along with Chester, for the Oakland Invaders in the first half. Flag still down. The official talking things over with the Denver Gold. However, the fate is sealed for Oakland. They are moving back toward their goal line. And the ball is marked doing that. at the 18-yard line. So it'll be a long haul now for Freddie Bassana and the Oakland Invaders. First and 20 from the 18-yard line of Oakland. Just underway second half. The Denver Gold, coached by Red Miller with a 15 to nothing lead to Ken Johnson first half touchdown passes two point conversion and a PAT receiver wide to the right side receiver wide left is Henderson blown back behind Bassano on the first and 20 Bassano looking to throw lobs it out of his backfield to Rosie and the man who was caught on the holding drops the football at the 15 yard line not a good night for Ted Tarosian, who went to Fresno State. He had a try with the Buffalo Bills in 1982. Well, the ball was thrown a little bit behind him, and uh, he I think he was anticipating getting hit at about the same time as he caught it, took his eyes off it, and it dropped right through his hands. Hearing the good old footsteps. I think that he's heard a few. He'll come back. The rain has stopped here in Denver. First half, we had sheets of rain falling, a mixture of snow added to that little ingredient of rain uh, but now here in the second half it's cold but not too cold and we have no moisture falling from the heavens wide to the left side gordon banks slot left side receiver wide to the right low set back behind, behind the sun off on the second and 20 he gives off to tarosia tarosia to the 20 to the 21 and that is all still needs big yardage for the first down greg gherkin the right outside linebacker and free safety ricky Har. Gang up on the tackle for the Denver goal. Gherkin made a good play. They trapped up the middle, and it looked like he had a lot of daylight, but Gherkin came in and made a good save. Gherkin had tries in the NFL with the Colts and the Denver Broncos. He has a degree in industrial management. He can manage that defense any way he wants to. Third and 16 now for Oakland. Freddie Bassana dealing at the 13-yard line in the center of the huddle for Oakland. The invaders break the huddle. Wide receiver, wide left, and in tight left side is Raymond Chester. Receiver split wide right. Bassana dropping the throw at his 13. Looking over the middle, fires the pass. Incomplete. In and out of the arms of an extended Gordon Banks. Banks had to leave his feet at the 40-yard line in an effort to try to snare that pass. Went in and out of his hands, and Ricky Hart was the defender back there, but the pass was incomplete because Gordon Banks, who went to Stanford, could not hang on. That would have been a tough catch, and as the minute he would have caught that ball, he would have been clobbered. It's been a hard-hitting game, as we said earlier. Stan Talley will kick away for the Oakland Invaders. He'll get it away from his 10. The ball will be snapped from the 22. Talley gets it. Wobbly kick. Martin, on one knee, takes it to the 39, moves up over the 40, and then is corkscrewed into the ground at the 41-yard line. <laughs> David Martin had to go down on one knee to pick it up at the 39 is all, and then he tried to advance the football, and they just twisted the little guy down into the turf. That was not one of his better punts, and it gives the goal good field position about the 42-yard line. And we have a flag down against the Oakland Invaders once again. Second time tonight on the punt that the Invaders have been flagged down. you got to refuse that penalty. And uh, that's what uh, Larry Canada, out in the middle of the field, is waving his arms. No, we don't want it. And that's what you say is, no, we don't want it. And that's what happened. The Denver Gold leading the Oakland Invaders. We had a brief breakup on our broadcast line, but we are back. The Gold is back. They have a first and ten on their 42-yard line. Quarterback Kenny Johnson with receiver. Wide to the left side, slot left, Johnson dropping the throw, looking, firing to the near sideline, had his tight end out there, incomplete, going stride for stride with a tight end. The Oakland Invader defender Billy Yancey with Bob Nizolik. Nizolik wanting a pass interference call because Yancey just wouldn't let him get around to go after the that football. Was, that was a good defensive play. They can boo and they can yell, and uh, Coach Miller on the sidelines is... 
didn't uh, keep his headset on for very long, but that was a good defensive play. Second and ten now for the Denver Gold. The ball at the 42 of Denver. The Gold leading 15 to nothing. Ken Johnson breaks his Gold teammate, slot to the left side, end in tight right side is Nizolik. Man in motion coming to the near side. Johnson wants to throw. Looking left. Pumps once. Lobs the pass complete to Bo Matthews. Matthews off the left side to the 45. And then he is slashed and tumbled down at about the 47-yard line of the Denver Gold. Mike O'Brien, the free safety out of the University of California, California. Berkeley. At Berkeley. Hail the tired. Golden Bears. Tired of saying. No, Cal you never get, never get tired. Just say California. There's only one Cal. What, uh, well, let's, there's U-C-L-A, little school, little sister. <laughs> <laughs> A few people just fell off their chairs listening to that one. It'll always be a little sister. Third and four now for the Denver Gold from their own 48-yard line. Lonel Fee wide to the right side. Receiver wide left. Back split behind quarterback Ken Johnson on the third and four. Johnson wants to throw again. Sets up at his 38. Some pressure. Lobs a pass to the near sideline. Making a miraculous reception at the 48-yard line of the Oakland Invaders, but shy of the first down was Harry Sidney. Sidney made a tremendous catch. That was a great, pretty good throw, too, to get over that linebacker. It looks like it's going to be shy of the first down if they stretch the chains out. No, it's going to be the first down for the Denver goal. Sidney, completely off his feet, extending his body, and just cradling the ball into his chest as he made the reception. Well, there's not too many things going right for the open invaders. Every time they get the football, they get a holy penalty, they get trapped, they have bad field position, uh, and then that big play like that, so Denver keeps the football, threatening to get the score. Light will put the game out of reach. Oakland's got to do something. Receiver coming wide to the right side is Howard Ballage. I stack behind quarterback Johnson in the backfield. Johnson gives it to the deep back. Harry Sidney. Sidney rambling up to the 40-yard line of the Oakland Invaders. He just ran by that blitzy linebacker. Good Frank, run. Frank Duncan, the strong safety, finally corralling Sidney, who attended the University of Kansas. He's a very strong running back. Second down and two now for the Denver Gold. The ball placed at the 40-yard line of the Oakland Invaders. 11-18 to go in the third quarter. Denver, 15 to nothing with the lead. Wide to the left side, Lonel Fee, the speedster from Houston. To the near side right, Colorado's Vic James. High, stacked once again behind Ken Johnson on the second and two. Johnson wants the throw, sets up at the 49, wants the pass along the near side, taking the reception but out of bounds, the diving Big James at the 10-yard line. Billy Yancey was back defending, James made the reception but he was out of bounds. Billy Yancey made a good point because they, have, they zoned to both sides of the field and he just pushed him out of bounds and once you're out of bounds you can't come back in to catch the football so it was a good play by the defensive back Billy Yancey third and two now for the Denver goal we'll see if uh, that number 35 goes in the lineup for Red Miller that'd be Larry Canada and we'll see uh, Larry's that big bruising type back we do not see Larry Canada in there Bo Matthews is probably about the same size so we have Matthews along with Sidney on the third and two for Denver from the 40 of Oakland. Receiver wide right, wide left, man in motion now to the left side, and we have back to the line. Hand off to Harry Sidney, and Sidney does not have the first down, but the action in the line prompted the officials to fly the flags, and they're calling it against the Oakland Invaders. I say they, that being the Denver goal, the offensive lineman, Glenn Hyde pointing. Against the Invaders, and I think the officials may agree. Well, it's just another mistake by Oakland. They, you know, they're killing themselves every time. They would have stopped him then, but uh, one of the, they had an all-out blitz on. One of the guys jumped offside. If you're going to blitz, you better make sure that you stay outside, so at least you get a chance to, to stop the play, which they would have done. It looks like the veteran Cedric Hartman was the gentleman who committed the infraction, thus allowing another first down for the Denver Gold. Cedric, you played 13 years, and you make that kind of mistake. Cedric Hartman, who attended the 
Island and North Texas State. And did he? He extended every play. He well, extended Mark. a lot of quarterbacks, a lot of, a lot of offensive backs, a lot of everybody. Ball at the 35-yard line of Oakland for Denver. Wide to the right side is Lonel Fee. Receiver split wide left. Johnson with one back now behind him in the backfield, that being Bo Matthews. Wing on the right side is Harry Sidney. Johnson wants to throw. Has some pressure in his drop. At the 42-yard line, Dewey McLean went high and just hammered Kenny Johnson to the PAT, the Prescription Athletic Turf here at Mile High Stadium. That time they had uh, basically the same play that Kenny threw a second touchdown on. It was a down and in pattern, but they again double zone both receivers and there's just no place to throw the football. I think that he, when he comes up the line, if Kenny can uh, look over the defense a little quicker, he's going to tell exactly what defense they're in because open has no way of hiding it at all. And they're telling you right off the bat what defense they're going to be in. Dewey McLean played for five seasons for the Atlanta Falcons. Caused a loss of five. It'll be second and 15 now for Denver from the 40-yard line of the Oakland Invaders. Wide to the right side comes Howard Ballage. Receivers put wide left. Back split behind Ken Johnson on the second and 15. Johnson long count. Gets What's the gap for Davis. Drops the throw. Looks over the middle. Fires straight down the middle of the field. Intercepted by Oakland's Mike O'Brien. O'Brien on his feet at the 5. To the 10. To the 15. Out of bounds at the 22-yard line. Mike O'Brien, the free safety, picks up his first interception of the season. And the Oakland Invaders will have the football. Where is Mike O'Brien from? Uh, it's hard to read this. Uh, it's in the Bay Area. Uh, California. California's Dirty Bears. That's it, Michael Bryan. Well, you look at the good friend of mine for Oakland. And it's California, Stanford, and they have a lot of players with that Bay Area background. And we have a timeout down on the field now. With the score, Denver. 15, Oakland, nothing. This is the 10 for Oakland from their own 23. Basada drops the throw over the middle. The pass is batted down. George, I see ya. A 6'4", 270-pound nose tackle. Put those arms up high and batted the ball to the turf. Incomplete. Let's pause for station identification. This is the ABC Radio Network. Second and ten for Oakland from their 22. Really a lot of action in the offensive and defensive line. The flags go. Every official has one just flew it. And we're going to have a busted play right here and a penalty assessed. A little illegal procedure against the Oakland Invaders. The center snapped the ball too soon. But Bassano was standing there and said, what is this? Second and ten for the Oakland Invaders. What? 9.51 to go in the third quarter. The Oakland Invaders trailing in the ball game 15 to nothing. They will have five yards tacked against them. So that will set up a second and 15 now for the Invaders. And Vasana has his work cut out for him. The rain stopped just before half. It has not rained since. It's a bit chilly here at Mile High Stadium. Anticipated crowd of about 37,000. We still have not received an official accounting for tonight's attendance. Gordon Banks wide left. Receiver wide to the right side for Posada. Banks put behind him in the backfield. Posada gives off to Arthur Whittington. Whittington straight up over the 20 to the 23, maybe the 24, and Laval short. Made the stop for the Oakland Invaders. That'll set up a third and ten now for the Invaders. And a probable Bassana passing situation. I would think so. Bassana stepped back from the huddle, looked over to his coaching staff on the sideline, received the signal, now is crouching down in that circular huddle. Breaks the boys. Gordon Banks wide to the near side. Wyatt Henderson wide, wide right side. And in tight on the right side is Raymond Chester. You can look for him in a situation like this. Pisana dropping the throw. Has Chester over the middle. However, he hits Arthur Whittington at the 33-yard line. But shy of the first down, David Doomers 
and Greg Gerken combined on the tackle for the Denver goal. I'm very, very impressed with Denver's defense tonight. They've completely shut down Oakland any time they try to do anything. Of course, we also have to mention, once again, Oakland's mistakes have caused them to be in a situation where it's hard to get back. They're, they're constantly getting some kind of illegal procedure penalty or holding, so it's been hard for Fred Masada to get him out of the hole. But all in all, uh, Oakland has hurt themselves, but you've got to give credit to Denver defense for playing so well thus far. On the fourth and two for Oakland from their own 31, the ball will be snapped from that 31. Talley will kick the ball away from his 22. Martin is back deep. Talley gets it, a wobbly kick. Will bounce. No, it doesn't. Martin takes it at the 27. Martin over the 30 to the 35. Spinning over the 40. To the 45. Out of bounds. At the midfield stripe. Super run by little David Martin. 5'9", 180-pounder who attended Villanova. Stan Talley, the punter, finally getting his arms around the little guy and running him out of bounds exactly at midfield. Once again... Denver's got good field position. They don't make any mistakes. They can put this game out of reach because Oakland has done exactly nothing the whole game. Now there's a timeout on the field with a score. Denver 15, Oakland nothing. Ten from the midfield stripe for Denver. Hands it off to Harry Sidney. Sidney bangs it up into Oakland territory at the 46-yard line. And Frank Duncan makes the stop for John Ralston's Oakland Invaders. 15 to nothing. Denver leading the football game. 7.53 to play in the third quarter. Fred Banfra, Craig Morton, and Dan Lovett at Mile High Stadium, Denver, Colorado. USFL Monday Night Football on ABC. Receiver wide, wide left. Now the back shift out of the backfield. Coming to the near side is Howard Ballage. One back, Larry Canada set behind Johnson. Gives off to the big guy from Wisconsin. Canada still on his feet, running, churning, getting the first down at the 39-yard line of Oakland. That's exactly what Red Miller wants. He wants to keep that ball on the ground, get that time going to 722 left. They score again. The way Oakland's been playing as a descent earlier, it's going to be hard for them to get back to the ball game. And a big mailman gained about six yards in that game, a first down, and they're in good field position once again. The ball marked at the 39-yard line of the Oakland Invaders, who really have, have not had much of an offense generated tonight. And they've been playing defense most of the evening. First and ten for the Denver goal. The fans here starting the rhythmic foot stomping here at Mile High Stadium. And in tight right side is Bob Nizolik. Quarterback Johnson gives off left side to Larry Canada. Canada is met shoulder to shoulder by Frank Manamalauna at the line of scrimmage. And the two big guys collided. You can hear it up here. Nice going, Frank. <laughs> you don't want to attempt Oh, that. yeah, I'll attempt it before the evening's over. My favorite place is Hawaii, so he must be in Hawaii. Now born in Samoa. Samoa. Grew up in close. Southern California. Well, in, in between. Thank you, Frank. No gain on the play for Larry Canada as Manamalauna made the stop for the Oakland Invaders. Frank 6'2", 245 father, a big boy. Played in the NFL with Kansas City. Receiver wide to the right side, James for Denver. Wide to the left side, Lonel Fee. High, stacked behind Johnson. Johnson has James in motion. Pitch to the right side. Sidney out at the 40, to the 35. And he has tumbled down at the 32-yard line. Coming up to get him, Frank Duncan, the San Francisco State graduate who played from 1979 through 82 with the San Diego Chargers. Shy of the first down, it'll be third and three for the Denver goal from the 32-yard line of the Oakland Invaders. Denver, 15 to nothing lead. The goal trying to get the ball across the goal line once more. 5.30 to play in this third quarter at Mile High Stadium, Denver. Well, one thing Oakland doesn't want to do is let him score again because it's going to put him in an awkward position if they do. P wide left side. To the near side right is Howard Ballage. Back split behind the quarterback Johnson on the third and three. They're going to blitz. Johnson, long count, wants to throw, looks down, has pressure, flagged down. Pass oh. incomplete, intended for Harry Sidney at the 31 yard line. Sidney curled to the left side. He would not have had the first down because right on his back was Frank Manamalauna. But the flag was flown, and we'll see what happens according to. To the indication we get from the Oakland Invaders, it looks like it's going to go against the Denver goal. You got to review.
use that penalty and force him to kick a field goal or try a field goal. Well, Brian Spielman has really not had too much exercise kicking the field goals. As you called it, the penalty declined by the Oakland Invaders. Tonight, we're not picking up the officials' uh, description of what's going on penalty-wise. Uh, every uh, other Monday night, we've had that availability. But tonight, not here in Denver. The kick is down, and the kick is going to go wide to the left side and roll. It's no good, and a flag is down at the 29-yard line. Brian Spielman trying a 49-yard field goal. No good. However, listen to the crowd. The flag against the Oakland Invaders. Offside. That's unbelievable. I imagine John, John Ralston has either lost a few hairs or more of them. He's either lost some hair or he's going to get some more gray ones because they're making some really just ridiculous mistakes. And these things shouldn't happen. Going to get the ball now. It's first and 10 for Denver. Uh, they're on the 27-yard line. Uh, it doesn't look too good for Oakland. So the Denver goal will have the football. First and 10 from the 27-yard line of the Oakland Invaders as Craig Morton told you. And now it looks like we're going to have a timeout called here. As we watch the official, now he's allowing the goal to come up to the line of scrimmage with 4.58 to play in the third quarter. Quarterback Ken Johnson, the receiver's wide right, wide left, high behind him in the backfield on the first and 10 from the 27 of Oakland. In motion left side is James. Hand off to the deep back, Harry Sidney. Sidney was hit at the line of scrimmage, managed to maintain his balance, moved the ball inside the 25, down to the 23 before Frank Duncan combined with Matt Alisaria to make the stop for the Oakland and Invaders and Elisaria was cut earlier uh, last week by the uh, Denver Gold. He was their starting uh, nose tackle at the beginning of the season, and I guess he became uh, not too good a favor with Red Miller, so he's on with the Oakland Invaders now. Just as long as he gets to play, I guess that's all he thinks about. A gain of four by Harry Sidney, so it'll be second and six. Sidney with 81 yards on the ground tonight. Ball at the 23 of Oakland for the Denver goal. Sydney now moves up from the eye. Pitch out left side to Bo Matthews. Matthews on running to the defenders to the 20. Inside the 20 out of bounds along the far side of the 15-yard line. Dean Moore finally caught up with him. Michael Bryan trying to outrun Bo Matthews, but Matthews turned on the Jets, picked up a first down for the Denver goal at the 15-yard line of Oakland. That was the same play that they used last week to beat Chicago in the goal line. This time, I know in Red Oak Miller's offense, I know that uh, Kenny Johnson saw the weak safety come up, so he audibled that play, which is a great play when you have a weak safety that's out of position. Uh, he called it audible, and they picked up the first down, and uh, Oakland is left uh, holding the gun again. So Denver goal with a 15 to nothing lead and the football at the 15-yard line of Oakland. First and 10 for Denver quarterback Ken Johnson. Johnson, one of the top quarterbacks in Colorado, University of Colorado history. Has a receiver wide right, wide left. Johnson fakes the handoff, rolls to the left side. Now he is going to be buried at the 18-yard line. That was Johnson missing a handoff. Dewey McLean and David Jefferson going hand-in-hand -hand to, to knock Johnson to the turf. And uh, as you said, he missed the handoff, and he had to eat it. Well, a lot of times when they, they call that a slant play to the fullback, if the fullback doesn't take that first step with his right foot up towards the line of scrimmage, uh, you're going to miss the handoff about 50 or 60 percent of the time unless you can really sprint out of there. That time, Bo Matthews just took off and created a bad angle for Kenny to get the ball to him. Rain starting to fall again here in Denver. Second and 12 for the goal from the 17 of Oakland. Wide to the right side is Howard Ballard. Receiver's foot wide left is Monel Fee. Back split behind the quarterback Johnson in the backfield on the second and 12 from the 17 of Oakland. Johnson dropping the throw. Time over the middle. Complete to Ballard at the sliding four-yard line. Ballard down to the two-yard line. Howard Ballard from Colorado made the sliding reception at the two first and goal to go for the Denver goal. Kenny Daniel and Mike O'Brien finally falling on him there, but a nice reception and a good pass from Kenny Johnson. That was their touchdown play. Uh, their second touchdown that came through was the exact same play. 
defensive back cannot afford, especially inside the 20-yard line, to get that far off of, of a receiver with no inside help. And that time, the strong safety was lined up on the line of scrimmage, anticipating a run. Kenny made it a, uh, maybe a saw that with the strong safety up. He could have audibled, and it was a good play because they got down on the two-yard line. We see the big guy, Larry Canada, back in the ball game. Fans here raising a ruckus. You might first, see the mailman get the ball. First and goal from the Oakland two for the Denver goal. Johnson behind the center. Nope. Gives off to Sidney. Sidney is banging his backfield and one back to the nine. Tucked down at the 13-yard line. They should give forward progress to about the nine-yard line. No, they're going to mark it at the six. That was a nice break for the goal. Frank Duncan wrapping up Harry Sidney and then running him back. And the snow is starting to fall now in Denver. <laughs> and we didn't come here to get, let you people come here without all the treats. You know, you got to have rain, you got to have snow. We can build some snowmen in the morning. Saw some sunshine this sunshine, morning. You even saw that. That's which is a very much of a rarity nowadays around here. Second and goal to go for the Denver goal from the six of Oakland. Denver leading the ball game 15 to nothing. We have double tight ends now. Actually, a wing on the right side is Vic James. And then right left side. Now the receivers overload to the right side. The back shift. Quarterback John rolling. Looks, pumps, fires into the end zone. Incomplete. Intended for a leaping Harry Sidney. However, a flag thrown at the goal line. Frank Duncan defending on Sidney in the end zone. Bob Dizolik saying that they held his uh, held onto his jersey and didn't let him get off the line of scrimmage, which may be the penalty that uh, Oakland's going to get against him this time. And that is what we're going to have here. Of course, there are a few differences in pass interference in the USFL from the National Football League. And that's what we're going to have, the call right there. Well, the, the difference is that it, it didn't make the difference this time. You cannot hold on to somebody's jersey, and that's what they did. They tried to, to prevent uh, Dezolik from getting off the line of scrimmage, and they did that, but they got caught. And it's another costly penalty for Oakland because they get an automatic first down. They mark the ball at the three-yard line of the Oakland Invaders. They call it a holding. Right. They held onto his jersey. So it'll be first and goal to go for the Denver goal. They're not giving the first down on the scoreboard, but it should be first. Right. First and goal to go for the Denver goal from the three of Oakland. Now the scoreboard corrects it. First and goal to go for the Denver goal from the three of Oakland. Bunched up along the line on the offense. Canada directly behind the quarterback. Swims oh. to get the handoff. The ball bouncing around, but Larry Canada has the presence of mind to fall on it. Another play goes flying high. And the fans here seem to think that flag is going to be called against the Oakland Invaders. Another flag down. As David Jefferson goes over to complain to the official, another flag was flown, and Cedric Hartman may be the culprit again. Well, Larry Canada fell down, and uh, I don't know how the defense is supposed to know whether he's down for good or not. They just piled on him to assure that he was down, and they gave a, a flag for that. I don't see that that's... Uh, I don't see that that's a real valid call, but then somebody kicked the referee's flag, and then they're going to get a personal foul for that. That's sportsmanlike conduct. Uh, they're liable to get every penalty in the book by the time they get through calling this thing. We have to make mention, even though it's snowing now and the snow has let up somewhat, it rained almost the entire first half, thus a bit of a slippery condition down, especially in the center of the field where most of the action has taken place. You and can I know it's worn down a little bit. We get the call on the late hit. Cedric Hardman. And as you mentioned, uh, how can you tell in that situation? I don't see how you can tell. Uh, a man's down, nobody's touched him, he fumbled the ball. A defensive lineman coming in, he doesn't know what's happened, and he's going to fall on him as a part of instinct. I don't think that, that was a good call by the referees. Oh, they're changing something here. What are they doing? 34 seconds to go in the third quarter now. Third penalty against the Oakland Invaders on this drive. And the ball will be marched inside the five. They mark it down to the half the distance to the goal line at about the one and a half yard line. So it'll be first and goal to go from the one and a half for the Denver goal. Well, they got 
two penalties on that. They got uh, personal foul and unsportsmanlike conduct, which, uh, first of all, they moved the ball down to the three-yard line, and then they got another half distance to the goal line, so they're one, at the one-and-a-half-yard line. Well, check who's in the backfield. We see that number 35, the black jersey, Denver Gold, Larry Canada, the big mile driver in there for Red Miller. Kenny Johnson leads his team up, and in tight left side, wing right side. Johnson on the first and goal from one and a half. A waste of snap, gets it, hands off to Sidney. Sidney banging toward the goal line, may have it inside the one, but then he is pulled up shy of the goal line by the Oakland defense, bunched up along the front. Alva Lyles from Boise State, and Frank Duncan also in on the tackle. You know, it's rolling, 17, 16 to go here in the third quarter. You know, the first three weeks of the season, Red Miller has been very vocal about his criticism about the referees, and maybe they've been reading the papers. <laughs> because they certainly haven't got any bad calls tonight. It was interesting. The official marked the ball down at about the one. And uh, Jerry Sagan ending the third quarter. We'll get you the story when we come back. That's the end of the third quarter with the score. Denver 15, Oakland nothing. To High Stadium, Denver, Colorado. Final 15 minutes of regulation play here in the game between the Denver Gold and the Oakland Invaders. 15 to nothing, Denver leads. It's second and goal to go for the goal from the two-yard line of the Oakland Invaders. Station, we were short one local commercial during the third quarter. We will make it up during the first time out here in the fourth quarter. The gold huddled back at about the 15-yard line, and before we broke for the end of the third quarter, Craig Morton, I noticed one of the defensive linemen, the ball had been marked at the one-yard line, he kicked it back to the two, and that's where they placed the ball. <laughs> well, the first time Oakland has been caught for doing something. So Ken Johnson requiring quiet as he is headed to the closed end of the stadium here at mile high, and in tight on the left side. Man in motion now, going to the left side. Hand off to Larry Canada. Canada dives to the goal line. He's going to be shy by just a hair. Marcus Quinn came up from the strong safety as everybody along that Oakland line bunched up to pro protect the goal line, and Larry Canada could not penetrate that invisible plane. They were good defensive play. I tell you, they were really stacked up there. You can tell me who made the stop there. It's uh, some good eyes up here. Third and goal to go from inside the one-yard line for the Denver goal trying to add to their 15 to nothing lead. And the uh, open invaders are constantly talking to the refs. They are still upset about what's happened to them. And it looks like uh, Kenny Johnson uh, looked for a minute there as he was motioning that he wanted a timeout. And I think we may be getting some type of a timeout here as the officials are chatting with each other. We'll wait and see if we do get an official timeout. Johnson now going to the officials and talking things over. I think there's a bit of confusion on the field. We're waiting to get the official signal. I don't know what signal that is. That's a new one to me. It's uh, open hand. <laughs> oh, open hand throwing up in the sky. Well, if, if, they, if he would jump, it looked like a high five. Yeah, it could be, yes. If he had something close. You know, they could have the referees high five. <laughs> We gotta have something new here, but he's doing it alone. Maybe that's they are lonely people. So that's the referee's high five. Wondering why he's missing. <laughs> well, some of the calls he's made, he doesn't have to wonder too much. Now, Johnson's still trying to get some clarification from the official. The fans in the closed end of this horseshoe stadium, whooping it up, and. Uh, we're having a, a bit of an indecision on the part of the officials and the part of the Denver Gold tonight. Bill Schmitz, the field judge, had come over to, to tell Red Miller what was going on. Miller's wondering what's going on. Now down for the Denver Gold. The ball inside the one-yard line of the Oakland Invaders. Ken Johnson. The Denver quarterback still wanting a clarification from the official. Now he calls for the timeout. So there's a break in Denver, Colorado. Fred Manfred, Craig Morton, Dan Lovett. This is Monday night USFL football. The Denver Gold leading 15 to nothing. The Gold with the football at the inside the one-yard line of the Oakland Invaders. Third and goal to goal for the Gold from inside the one of Oakland. And bookending right and left. The quarterback, Johnson, down behind center. Bo Matthews in motion, right hand off to Sidney, touchdown, Denver! Harry Sidney, the 6'1", 218-pound running back from the University of Kansas, took it in from a half yard.
yard out, and it's a 21 to nothing Denver lead. Brian Spielman will be on to try to make it a 22 to nothing Denver lead. Spielman will kick out of the hole of reserve quarterback Jeff Napple. Napple can throw the football. We remember back in the first quarter when he threw in for two. But I think he'll go for the one and be happy. That ball is back. The kick is up. The kick is good. So, with 14 minutes to go in the ball game, there's a timeout on the playing field with a score. Denver 22, Oakland nothing. Gold making their fans happy here in the Mile High City tonight, leading 22 to nothing. 14 minutes to play in the fourth quarter. Double men back for the Oakland Invaders. Poncho James and Jerry Aldridge both standing at the goal line. Spielman will kick off. And just before Oakland took the field here to receive the kickoff, they huddled at the 40-yard line across the field with head coach John Ralston. And with a 22-0 deficit to overcome, they better get in gear. Uh, they definitely better get in gear. It's just been an unfortunate night. This is certainly a different team than we saw last week up at uh, Michigan when they played the Panthers up there and won. They just haven't been able to get anything on track. The penalties, uh, the traps, uh, mostly penalties has really hurt them. Brian Spielman really felt it. Two yards deep is James. He fumbles the ball in the end zone, and he will use very good discretion in not coming out with a football. Such as uh, the knee down, will come out first and ten at the 20-yard line of Oakland for the invader. I think that would have to typify what Oakland's been going through tonight. We look up to the heavens. We see a few snowflakes falling, but uh, he's not done tomorrow. I had hoped. <laughs> I guess it's the mountain range that uh, creates the diversity of weather here. Oh, yes, the winds, the change of currents, uh, they never know what's going to happen around here. But usually it's pretty nice. It's a nice place to live. Now we have a flag down, and we're going to have a kickoff again. All right. Maybe Oakland gets a break here. Well, Pancho James... Uh, Played his football in college at San Francisco State. Would like to have an opportunity. Looks like an offside against the Denver Gold. So the ball will be marched back from the 35. The tee will be at the 30-yard line of Denver now. And Spielman will really have to get the instep into it in order to drive uh, the uh, deep backs toward the goal line for Oakland. James to the near side right. Wide across the field is Jerry Aldridge. Aldridge from Angelo State, James from San Francisco State. And Brian Spielman from Capital will kick off. From where? Capital. Capital. Interesting place to be from. So Spielman, the 5'11", 183-pound soccer-style kicker, approaches the ball. He lays the wood to it. Deep into the end zone, James Fields at mid-end zone. Up over the goal line, to the 5, to the 10, to the 15, to the 20, outside of the 25. He is tumbled, but he remains on his feet, spinning up over the 30, to the 35, to the 37, maybe the 38-yard line. Ryan Spielman, the little guy, making the hit. A fine return by Poncho James, who had a great deal of desire to maintain his balance. And that was very questionable whether he should have taken it out of the end zone, because he was about five yards deep. But he made a great run. That's what Oakland needed. They just need some kind of momentum to get going here. And I'd like to see Oakland do something. Masana will try to get him on the scoreboard quickly. Sends Wyatt Henderson wide to the right side. Raymond uh, Chester in tight on the right side. Receiver split left is Gordon Banks. Masana dropping the throw. First and 10 from his 38. Masana lobs it out to Tarosian. And Tarosian slips. He makes the reception at the 35 to the 36-yard line. That was Tonight, a comical play. It's they, not a good night for Ted Tarosian. No. First of all, I think uh, the goal had about nine people on the field. They were trying to still get players on the field as the play was starting to progress. And then uh, he gets a little uh, flip pass out there, and uh, he can't keep the seat. A loss of two on the pass completion. Masana needs more than a two-yard loss through the air in order to get his team back. They trail 22 to nothing. Open with a football at their own 36-yard line. Receiver split wide, right, wide, left. It's getting cold in Denver. Masana dropping the throw, trying to get hot. Fires over the middle. Complete. Oh, great catch. Raymond Chester fighting, wrestling for the football, and the big 6'4", 235-pound tight end wrestled the football away 
for the completion from Will Lewis, the 5'10", 184-pound left cornerback. Will Lewis, I think, thought he had the ball going the other way, and Raymond Chester came right over the top of him and took the ball away from him. It was a great play by Raymond Chester. Third down and four for the Invaders from their own 44-yard line. Wyatt Henderson, the speedy guy from Fresno State, wide right. Banks wide left. Quarterback Pisano will throw. throw. Short drop. Fires the pass complete to Whittington. Over the midfield strike. First down for the Oakland Invaders at the 48-yard line. Maybe the 47 of the Denver Gold. Ricky Haar and Nate Miller combined on the tackle for Red Miller's Denver Gold. A first down for the Oakland Invaders. 12 minutes to play in the ball game. 22 to nothing. Denver leading Oakland. Oakland's got to get a quick score and get that ball back so they can get in some kind of position where they can get back to the ball game. Well, Gordon Banks, wide receiver, has good speed at 10 3 3 100 meters. And we haven't seen Oakland go up top. And uh, Bissana has a great arm, and he has yet to throw one deep. Banks wide left. Gives off to his fullback, to Rosen. No, he doesn't. A great fake. Fires the pass complete to his tight end, Raymond Chester. Down at the 27-yard line. Chester goes out of bounds at the 27 after picking up a first down. Nate Miller ran him out. I thought Tarosi had had the football. That was a great fake, but even a better throw. And then he just arched it out there to the tight end, Raymond Chester, who was all by himself at the 25, and Chester was then pushed out of bounds at the 25 after making the reception. The more I see of Fred Bassana, the more I'm impressed with a young California graduate. Well, there's a timeout on the field with a score. Denver 22, Oakland nothing. Bassano will throw complete to Wyatt Henderson out on the right side. Henderson on a short yardage gain. Moves the ball from the 25 to about the 21-yard line. Then run out of bounds along the near side by David Martin and John Fairfield. Stopping the clock with 11.09 to go in this football game. Now, you saw quite a rally at the Silverdome a couple of Saturdays ago. Correct. Uh, you know, there's always enough time to score three touchdowns, especially when you got 11 minutes left. So, uh, with Fred Bassan in there, the way that he controls this ball team, uh, his great arm, and his great presence in the field, he's able to accomplish anything. Four-yard gain on that pass completion. Second and six for open. The 21 of Denver. Bassan dropping the throw. Looking in the... Oh. Incomplete. Intended at the 15-yard line for Arthur Whittington. Greg Gherkin there to bat the ball away. Nice yeah. play by Gherkin. That was very close to an interception. That was just an outstanding play by Greg Gher Gherkin. 6'5", 228-pound linebacker, two-year pro from NAU, Northern Arizona University. That's, of course, in Flagstaff, Arizona. Do you remember Gherkin with the... Broncos, yeah, he he had an outstanding chance to make the team, but uh, we just have so many good linebackers at the time. It was very hard. I think he made the last cut to the last cut, so he was in contention all along. Just a matter of time to be found a place to play someplace. Third and six for Oakland from the 21 of Denver. The sauna looking to throw, sets up at the 29, fires over the middle, incomplete overthrown, intended for Wyatt Henderson. Also in the same area was the tight end Raymond Chester and about four defenders. They had that fairly well defense. And they're going to go for it on fourth down. They got no choice. Trailing in the ball game, 22 to nothing. The Oakland Invaders will try to put six points on the board with a touchdown or get the first down here because they have it fourth and six from the 21 of Denver. Craig Morton, what kind of a play do you call on this one? A successful one. That's the best kind. That I'd have to go to Raymond a long time. <laughs> I'd have to go to Raymond Chester. He so seems to be the one that uh, can get free. They're double covering their outside receivers, and Raymond Chester will get uh, maybe a linebacker on him. At the very worst, he'll get a smaller defensive back, and he's got a linebacker on him right now. More than six for Oakland for the 21 of Denver. Chester split. Masada dropping the throw. Looking, wide open. looking for Chester. Fires complete at the eight-yard line. First down. Raymond Chester, as you called it, Craig Morton. Tom Sullivan finally making a stop. Well, they just can't afford to put, uh, what they try to do is they, they double cover him, but they, they put a defensive back on the outside, and then they take the middle linebacker and come in and try to get him on the inside. And with the middle linebacker coming to all that distance, there's no way in the world that he can cover Raymond Chester. First and goal to go for the Oakland Invaders, trying to get their first points of the night on the scoreboard here. Snow starting to fall once again at Denver. 10-26 to go in the ball game. 
Out of the ball game, Laval short. Into the ball game, George Idea. Wide to the right side, Wyatt Henderson. Splitting left now is Gordon Banks. Lone back to Rosian behind quarterback Bissona. Bissona wants to throw. Looking to the end zone. Rolling Richard right Richard. side. Bissona may throw into the end zone. Touchdown! Great. Arthur Whittington. Whittington curling across the middle. Bissona had plenty of time. Started rolling right, then fired straight into the end zone to Arthur Whittington, the six-year pro out of SMU, and we have six points on the board for the Oakland Invaders. Just an outstanding quarterbacking job by Fred Bissana. I, you know, we say so many great superlatives about it, but I don't know if we could say enough about uh, how good he really is because uh, he's, for four weeks now, he's been the most consistent quarterback in the United States Football League. His statistics are so very, very impressive, and tonight is no exception. 22-6. to six. The Denver Gold lead the ball game. However, Oakland, with the two-point option try in this USFL, will go for the two. Bissana. And we have a whistle. And we're going to have a timeout called by the Denver Gold. I well, there's a timeout on the field with a score. Denver 22, Oakland 6. This is 6. The Denver Gold leading the Oakland Invaders. The Invaders have just scored a touchdown. And they are going to try to attack two points on. Freddie Bassana following the timeout called by the Denver Gold. The Gold wanting to get their defensive signal straight on this two-point try. We have a slot to the right side. Raymond Chester, the fine tight end, in on the tight left. Back split, now the back corrosion in motion to the left side. Bassana dropping to throw, looking into the end zone, fires incomplete. Intended in the corner of the end zone for Wyatt Henderson. Will Lewis was defending tightly. We see Arthur Whittington and Wyatt Henderson oh. doing a war dance in front of the official. Then the official flies the flag. Richard Lavelle got a little bit fed up with what he was hearing from the Oakland Invaders, took the flag out of his back pocket, flew it, and we have another penalty coming up against Oakland. There is, first of all, there's no excuse for throwing a flag like that. The referee's got to have a little bit thicker skin than that. I mean, I'm sure that he was not called some of the nicest things in the world, but in the heat of the battle, these guys want to win very badly, and they're going to say things that uh, they think that it was right. Uh, that's very seldom you ever see that called in the NFL. So the Oakland Invaders fail on the two-point try, and with 10 minutes and three seconds to play in the ball game, it's Denver 22, Oakland 6. You know, you can follow the United States Football League all season long on ABC Radio. Next Saturday night, we have a, a ball game that shapes up to be a dandy to be broadcast over most of these same stations. The unbeaten Tampa Bay Bandits play host to George Allen's Chicago Blitz. Bob Buck, Greg Morton, and Mike Barry will be in Tampa, Florida, where hopefully it'll be a little bit warmer, to bring you the action with airtime set for 7.45 p.m. Eastern Time. The matchup between quarterback veterans Greg Landry and John Reeves should be a dandy. Then, a week from tonight, Paul Horning, Dan Lovett, and I will be in the Silverdome, Pontiac, Michigan, for the game between the Denver Gold, the team leading here 22-6 tonight, and the Michigan Panthers with Action Central, Anthony Carter. Airtime next Monday, 7.45 p.m. That's 7.45 p.m. Eastern Time next Monday night. Follow the USFL all season on ABC Radio. So with a penalty, the Oakland Invaders will be kicking the football off. To the Denver Gold, Kevin Shea will kick off from the 20-yard line of Oakland. So Denver could start with excellent field position again. That's exactly what Oakland did want them to do, start with good field position. And one thing that Denver can't do is get to, in a situation where uh, they're going to be conservative. Uh, if they do, then uh, Freddie Bastanos can you know, bring it back as fast as possible. He's so, got the capabilities. Thanks to the penalty, rather than standing back at the goal line, the safety back for the Denver Gold, David Martin will stand at his own 27, awaiting the Kevin Shea kick from the 20 of Oakland. Jay, another soccer-style kicker. Whatever happened to the straight-on kickers in football? They retired with old high top Jim Turner. Jay will kick it off with 10-13 to go in the ball game. Jay's Oakland Invaders trailing 22-6. to six. I tell you, they better be careful here. They think they're going to onside kick. Jay really belts it. That's bad. Clark's going back. Watches it hit it. Pick that ball up. 
picks it up at the 8, then scampers over the 10 to the 15, to the 20, and it stops at the 21-yard line. So, Kevin Shea hit the ball well. David Martin may have been up a little bit too close. Well, they were playing for an onside kick, which is a ridiculous thing, but there's 10 minutes left. They're not going to onside kick and give the ball to uh, Denver on the 30-yard line going in. I mean, it's just a natural uh, assumption they're going to kick it away. They don't play for an onside kick, which they did. So, Ken Johnson, that's why we're not coaching. That's it. That's why we're sitting up here and the having so much fun. Of the broadcast booth with my raccoon. With your raccoon coat. I'm glad that hunting, my good season, attitude. Uh, hunting season is over here, or else we'd have a few pot shots taken up we, here with that we coat. We still may. <laughs> <laughs> All of your fans. <laughs> First and ten for the Denver goal. Well, that turned out to be a good break for Oakland. From their 20-yard line. But LP wide to the left side, along with Vic James. James in the slot. Hand off to Harry Sidney. Sidney seems to be a sure-handed ball carrier, and I say that because he's the type of guy that doesn't seem to cough up the football. David Shaw finally wraps him up for the Oakland Invaders, and that's what you need now if you're the Denver goal, just to let that clock run down. That's exactly what they want to try to do, but they can't do it in a uh, real conservative fashion because uh, they don't want to get to uh, give Freddie Masano that football. But that's a good gain. If they're going to gain four or five yard line, uh, yards every time they carry, then they can be successful about running the clock out. Ken Johnson, who's uh, looked extremely capable and competent tonight directing this uh, Denver gold attack, but that's what you get when you have a nine-year veteran. That's, now. that's exactly right. Slot to the left side, and inside right. right side. Hand off, goes straight up to Bo Matthews, the eight-year pro out of Colorado. Matthews hits up close to the first down yardage. Mike O'Brien stops him there. Matthews with the Chargers from 74 to 79. And then, as we mentioned a little earlier, played his football in the Big Apple of New York for the football giants. I'd say this is a fairly key play for the Oakland Invaders. Third and one and one from the 29. And the big mailman's in there for Denver. The mailman being Larry Canada, the 6'1", 225-pounder from the University of... Back Johnson on the third and one. Johnson gives to Canada. Going outside. Canada has the first out of the hurdles over a tackler at the 30-yard line. That's his specialty, third one. You give the ball to the mailman, and uh, I'd say 95% of the time, he's going to make the first down for you. Mike O'Brien and Gary Plummer there to, to slow down the mail. Neither rain nor sleet nor snow. <laughs> but it just O'Brien nice. and Plummer that time. 38,720 tickets sold for this contest here at Mile High Stadium in Denver. That is not the actual attendance, but we have 38,720 tickets sold for the ball game. How many people showed up? I don't know, but I bet you at least 32, 33,000. Still money in the, the owner's pocket. That's all he wants, I guess. He didn't care if they show up or not as long as they sell those tickets. First and 10 for Denver from the 33, the goal 33. They leave. Slot left side and inside right side. Hand off all the right side to Glenn Ford. Glenn, not the actor, gets the ball up over the 35 to about the 36. Glenn from Lenore Ryan, a rookie. Little Harry Plummer on the uh, goal. So the goal who played relatively penalty free football tonight get us back to holding penalty here, but uh, with the 22 to 6 lead and 7.29 to go in the ball game. It's not as critical as it might be if we had a tighter contest. No, not yet. But it still can change, you know, very fast, if, you know, Fred. It, it, you never know. They get a quick score. They onside kick. A lot of things have happened in this, this strange game of football, and uh, tonight could be no exception. Well, you know, you talk about the, the Oakland Invaders and Freddie Vassana. Wyatt Henderson, who had five touchdown receptions coming into tonight's ball game, has been fairly silent. Well, you know, we said earlier that uh, the one thing that uh, Basana hasn't done is go up deep, and I don't understand that because uh, the goal is not giving that much de double coverage. Uh, they are putting their backs, their defensive backs, a little farther off the, uh, the offensive receivers, but with their speed, I don't think that makes much difference, and with his great arm, uh, they ought to give it a shot. So the 10 yards tacked on for holding first and 20 for Denver from their 23. Receiver going wide to the right side. Near side left is Lonel Fee. Johnson with backs behind him in the backfield, two of them. Long count, hands off. Bo Matthews with the carry. Matthews up over the 25, maybe to the 26-yard line. 
And Matt Elisara making the stop for the Oakland Invaders. And you notice, uh, first half, Terry Miller, the five running back from Oklahoma State, had his bell rung, and he has not been in the ball game since. Well, he, we didn't mention that, but he left right after he got hurt. He was holding his mouth, maybe had to have some stitches, maybe something more serious than that, hopefully not. But he left the field a little early, and he, he preceded the team in the locker room, and he hasn't come out, so uh, he might have gotten hurt. And we hope, hopefully, he has not hurt very seriously. Gain of two on the carry, so we have a second and 18 for Denver from their own 25. Gold quarterback, Ken Johnson. Long count, with the clock running down, 6.42 to go in the ballgame. Gives off to Larry Canada on a cross. Canada up to the 30-yard line, and then he is driven back to the 28. That time, Johnson faked the one back, and then Larry Canada, the big back, coming from the opposite side, took the handoff and went off left side. Gary Plummer and Matt Elisera making the stop again for Oakland. Well, they tried to fool him, thinking it was an in, uh, in sweep to the right, and they just inside handed to Larry Cannon come underneath, trying to uh, fool the linebackers who were trying to get a, a good flow to the strong side, and they didn't mix them up very much. Of course, they know they're not going to pass because they got to run that clock out. Third and 14 for Denver. Craig Morton, what do you think of the linebackers in this league? Well, I think that the linebackers that I've seen are very good, good players. Uh, they seem to be the key to every defense that I've seen because most defenses are playing at 3-4. Third and 14 for Denver from their 29. Ooh, hand off to Larry Canada as he gets the football. He is greeted by big number 70, Lonnie Green. Somebody forgot to block him. Lonnie Green got there where the football did, dropping Larry Canada for a loss. And we have a timeout on the field with a score. Denver 22, Oakland 6. Denver goal from their own 29, so Steve Gortz will punt. Back deep for the Oakland Invaders, standing at the 26. is Billy Yancey. Gortz will kick the ball away from his 18-yard line. Gortz gets the snap, powers the kick, and I do mean skies the kick. Yancey takes it at the 32 and kneels down there. And it'll be first and ten for the Oakland Invaders with their own 32-yard line. And Gortz did not want to return, and boy, he drew some ice on top of that football. Uh, he certainly did. That was a great punt for, for Denver. 39-yard punt. Even though it wasn't that far, uh, they didn't want any return, and that's exactly what happened. Oh, well, we have a timeout on the field. With a score, Denver 22, Oakland 6. You're ready to go in this ball game from Mile High Stadium, Denver, Colorado. Fred Matra, Craig Morton, Dan Lovett. The Oakland Invaders with the football. First and 10 from their 32. They are trailing on the scoreboard by a 22 6 count. Pretty Masada, their quarterback, has to put something in the end zone. Masada with receivers put wide right, wide left. One behind him in the backfield, one back there. Masada dropping the throw. Some time over the middle with the pass. That's interference. And Complete. And a pass intended for Wyatt Henderson. Hanging all over Wyatt Henderson was David Martin, the right cornerback from Villanova, and we have a flag. Martin, with hands on hips, looking at the official, like saying, I didn't do anything, but I'm you called it right time. away, Craig. So it'll be a first down for the Oakland Invaders, and they need that, and they have to march the football into the end zone with 5.24 to go. And you would have to call that one an intentional. Well, it looks like they're going to give a 15-yard penalty, which, but I would think, according to their new rule, that if it's deliberate, which that seemed like that was fairly deliberate, that they get the ball uh, where the foul co was uh, committed, but uh, evidently not. They're just going to give them an unintentional penalty. There's going to come a game where that intentional and yeah. non-intentional is going to cause a little bit of controversy. I, I agree with you. That's a very dangerous rule. Gordon Banks wide to the right side. Wyatt Henderson split left on the first and ten for Oakland from their own 47. Back split behind Basana in the backfield. Basana will throw again. Freddy drops to the 36. Some pressure now. Fires incomplete. Intended for Arthur Whittington. And another flag down as Ricky Haar had Whittington around the belt buckle before Arthur could try to make the catch. <laughs> they don't want him to get away from it. If he had caught that ball and he hadn't had a hold of him, uh, he would have been up the sideline. So maybe it was a good play. And I want to know how they're going to call this, whether if it's going to be intentional or if it's going to be uh, uh, not just, well, what was the other thing? They, not intentional. Accident, accidental. I, I don't think there's too many things that 
Well, they're going to give them an accidental uh, interference. I don't see how they can. That's a, that's a, a very dangerous rule. 15 very yards dangerous. again. So 30 yards in two passes. Not one completion, however, two pass interference penalties. Another first down for the Oakland Invaders this time. They are in Denver Gold Territory at the 37 of Denver. Let's call it the 38 to be a little bit more precise. Masano with receiver wide right is Banks. Wide to the left side is Henderson. Masano wants to throw, wants to get six. Masano looking over the middle to Chester at the 25. First down, Raymond at the 20. Chester to the 16-yard line. What a, a weapon tough guy what a to weapon. bring down. Will Lewis, Tom Sullivan combining, and you have to go double team on Chester. <laughs> and as David Mark was getting up from the bottom of the pile there, he wouldn't let go of Raymond Chester's foot. Chester, just like... Waved his right foot and knocked the little 5'9", 180 pound David Martin back to the turf. Martin didn't like it. I don't know if David Martin was thinking of a spare cleat or a spare tooth on that one. <laughs> Freddy Vasada, first and 10 for Oakland from the 16 of Denver. Slot to the left side. Vasada dropping the throw again. To the near sideline with a pass intended for Chester. Chester went up, had the ball cradled in his hand momentarily as he leaped. David Dumars hit him, and the ball went incomplete. Well, it's, uh, if Masana had a seen Whittington on the other side, uh, there was nobody covering him. They just completely blew their coverage, and they just happened to guess right when they blew it because uh, they forgot about Arthur Whittington on the other side of the field because he was so wide open. 4.33 to go in this football game. Second and 10 now for Oakland from the 16-yard line of the Denver goal. Oakland trailing 22 to 6. The invaders send Gordon Banks wide to the left, slotting left side, Wyatt Henderson, and in tight on the right side, Raymond Chester. Back split behind Basada in the backfield. Basada drops to the 25, looking to the end zone, lofting it there, incomplete! In the far left corner of the end zone, intended for a diving Gordon Banks, Nate Miller right on his tail. Good defensive play by Nate Miller. I think what happened is that the receiver didn't think that uh, Freddie was going to throw to him, and he kind of slowed up. Let's pause for station identification. This is the ABC Radio Network. Serving the Hudson Valley with news, music, and USFL football, this is WHUC Hudson. Well, Craig Martin could be the ball game right here. It's a third and ten for... Well, they've got two downs they're going to go. Well, yeah, down, but, so, but you got to... Yeah. It would be nice to get it this time, and they're gonna, we're going to have to look for our... Uh, for, uh, Chester again because uh, he's the key when it comes to third and ten. Ball at the 16-yard line of Denver for Oakland. Chester in tight on the right side. Bassana dropping the throw, looking for Chester in the end zone. Touchdown! Oakland Invaders, Raymond Chester! Well, we can call it from up here. It's too bad they don't know about it down there because it's just an obvious situation where you're going to get to Raymond Chester one-on-one -on, -one on somebody and they're not trying to cover him up at all. They're, they're so worried about the outside receivers uh, that they're not paying attention to him. That's Will, a great play. Will Lewis with the man who was beat by Raymond Chester and Freddie Vasana. And we now have a 22-12 football game. Well, this is a real key play. This two-point conversion is so very, very, very important. Vasana, who was unsuccessful on the last two-point attempt, has Henderson wide right, wide to the left side is Banks. And in tight right side is Raymond Chester. Now, Henderson in motion to the left side. Basana rolling, rolling, looking across field. He throws into the end zone and is picked off in the end zone by Phil Hansen, negating the two-point try. So, with four minutes and 21 seconds to go in this football game at Mile High Stadium in Denver, the score, the goal, 22, the Oakland Invaders, 12, the ball. That was a 16-yard touchdown pass from Freddie Bassana to his tight end, Raymond Chester. Six plays to drive, 68 yards, aided by a couple of penalties. It took one minute and 11 seconds for Oakland to get the football into the end zone. And we have a 22-12 football game. Denver leading the Oakland Invaders, and the Invaders will be teeing the football up, and we all wait for the possible onside kick. Back deep, we have Glenn Ford and David Martin for the Denver goal. Ford will... 
go wide to the right side. To the near side left is David Martin. And they are not playing deep. They anticipate the onside try by Kevin Shea. Shea, three yards back and at an angle to the football, approaches. And he belts it. The ball will hit at the goal line and bounce into the end zone and through the end zone. It'll be first and ten for the Denver goal from their 20-yard line. I'm a bit surprised. Well, they, I guess John Rawlson feels that there's 4.13 left. Uh, the Invaders got three timeouts left. They figure that uh, Denver's going to play a conservative. They can get the ball back maybe in about a minute and 30 seconds. Uh, that'll leave them about uh, you know two and a half minutes, and maybe they'll try to get a field goal or touchdown quickly and then an onside kick. Maybe well, it's not a bad deal. Well, you know, Craig, uh, as we approach this two-minute right. portion, that two-minute ruling could play a part in this ball game. I think it definitely will. And as I said earlier, I think the last two minutes of each half where they stop the clock on each first down and wait till everybody gets lined up for the change in, in place is a good rule. As far as the defensive pass interference call, uh, I'll have to question that because I think it's going to be harmful to some team along the way. First and 10 for Denver from their own 20. 4-13 to go in the ball game. The goal for the lead, 22-12. to 12. Ken Johnson, long count. Gives off to his running back, Harry Sidney. Sidney over the 20 to about the 22-yard line. Frank Malamalamuna there to make the tackle for the Oakland Invaders from the city by the bay. One of the cities by the bay, I guess, is the proper way when you talk about Oakland. Yes, one of the many cities. There's Berkeley. <laughs> you keep putting it Berkeley up. San Jose. Not too close to the bay, but... Uh... Yeah, Memorial, California. Memorial Stadium there. It's Memorial Stadium. I've, uh, I've heard of that place. Wide to the right side is Howard Ballard. End in tight left side for Denver. Second and eight for the goal from their 22. Johnson with back foot behind him. Crock running down 331 to play in the ball game. Johnson. Long count. Waits the snap from Tom Davis. Hands off to Harry Sidney again. Sidney to the 24. And then he is twisted down to the turf by David Jefferson and Matt Elisara. Well, the fans don't like this conservative play, but uh, you got to play the odds that uh, they're not going to score twice in, in three minutes. Uh, they used to boo us greatly when Red Coach here when they went to Broncos because he did the same thing. We were a little bit ahead. We played conservative because we had such a great defense. But uh, hopefully it's not going to turn around on tonight. Craig, during one uh, break tonight, we're chatting about the rarefied air here at Mile High Stadium. You say it does take a bit of adjustment to get used to this altitude here in Denver. Well, only if you're going to be here for a few weeks. I remember the first time I played with the Broncos and I came up here, uh, I was quite winded after the first couple of weeks and not uh, in too good a shape. But after you uh, become acclimated and you get some more of those red corpuscles circulating in your, your body, that you become acclimated. But a team that comes up... Up to 
their hero here in Denver, Craig Morton. Craig giving the wave down to the the Bronco and Inv and Gold fans here in Denver. On the fourth down, we'll have Steve Gortz in the punt. Gortz will get it away from his 15. End over ender. Coming back to Yancey. Yancey takes it at his 33. Over to 35. Coming outside is good tackle. Down. Good tackle. 36 yard line. Coming down quickly. And just absolutely slashing him down, Will Lewis. He would not let him get out of bounds. Because that's all Yancey had on his mind to get out of bounds, stop that clock. But the, the clock is stopped in an exchange of possession. So uh, Oakland's got to get up that ball, get the first downs. Possibly try to get a couple scores. That's what they got on their mind. Well, we've mentioned Wyatt Henderson tonight being strangely silent. And we have a timeout on the field called by the official with 304 to go in this football game. Right side, Gordon Banks. The man we talked about, Raymond Chester. And in tight on the left side. Receivers put wide left on the first and ten for Oakland from their 36. Fasana to throw. Fires the pass complete. Woo! Although he bobbled the ball. Catch. Held on at the 45, shy of the first down. Putt showed, and Phil Kasich hit him, but Whittington juggled and then maintained control of the football. It's going to be shy of the first down by a, uh, just a bit here. I called Whittington. It was Ted Tarosian making the reception. That makes up for a lot of his mistakes. That was a great catch, boy, because he got nailed. Tarosian. I can't believe he could hold on to the ball after getting hit like that. He just got sandwiched there. He was juggling the football, and we have two minutes and 49 seconds to play in this football game. The chains are being brought in from the near side. They're going to stretch about to see if the Oakland Invaders managed to pick up the first down. I think they did by the nose of the football. They did. Well, they got to get up the ball right now, and uh, when those chains are placed back in the line, on the sidelines, rather, get ready to snap that ball, because they can't afford to lose any more time off that clock. Masana talking to his back, Whittington in the backfield, also to Tarosian. Receivers, wide left, wide right. Raymond Chester split from the line this time. On the first and ten for Oakland from their 46. Masana to throw. Time. To the near sideline with a pass incomplete. Intended at the 40-yard line of Denver for a diving Gordon Banks. Banks could not hang on, and it was out of bounds. Well, uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of being partial right here because I'm looking about what Raymond Chester is doing. I've got my eyes on him, and they're still trying to cover him with linebackers, and it's just an impossibility to do that. I'd like to see him come back. I know the coaches, at least the press box, have got to see that, and I would come back as long as they're trying to cover him with linebackers, get that ball to him. Two minutes, 36 seconds on the clock. Left in the ball game here at Mile High Stadium. 22 to 12. The Oakland Invaders trail the Denver goal. The Invaders with the football. Second and 10 from their own 46. Basana splits the back in his backfield. Receivers wide right, wide left. Basana gives off the winning to winning to The goal may have recovered that football as it squirted around loose, but the official says that the Oakland Invaders will maintain possession of the football. Coming up with it was Kurt Yonker, the left tackle for the Invaders, saving the day right now for John Ralston's Invader Ball Club. Third and four now for the Invaders from the 48. Masada dropping the throw, looking, pumps over the middle with a pass, incomplete. Intended for Wyatt Henderson, also in the area, Gordon Banks, the ball actually... Looks like it hit one of the defenders of the Denver Gold in the hands. And now we have a few tempers flaring on the field at the 40-yard line. And we oh. have David Martin teeing off on Wyatt Henderson down at the 40-yard line. And Wyatt Martin would throw a punch at David Henderson when Henderson has the helmet on. It's beyond me. Uh, that's what football does to some guys. He's got to be thrown out of the game. That's ridiculous for a football player to do that. And I don't like to see it. And David Martin is coming to the near sideline. There is no room in the game of football for that kind of attitude in, in, in play. There's none. I would find his fanny so much money as a head coach. There's no reason for that. He's like, he has a chance of taking the, the victory right out of the goal's hand by doing something like that if they get a penalty. Personal foul against 
David Martin. So the officials have not uh, yet marched off the penalty. Well, David Martin, I think that you're going to learn a big lesson. I think Red Miller will be talking to him? I think so, and probably the commissioner and everybody else. You know, there's just no excuse for that. I don't care how mad you get, you got all that equipment on, you can protect yourself. But you don't go slugging anybody in a football uniform. So thanks to David Martin's temper, the Oakland Invaders pick up a first down at the 33-yard line of the Denver goal. As the ball is marched to the 33. Just a little tarnishment on the game of football, and uh, there's no, no reason for that should ever happen. 2-0-1 to go in this football game. Oakland trying to fight from the 22-12 deficit they face. Wyatt Anderson wide right side, Banks wide left. Hand off to Whittington, Whittington to the 30, to the 25 of the Denver goal. Arthur Whittington churning down, Calvin Turner making the stop, and we're going to receive the two-minute warning with one minute and 55 seconds to play in this football game. If the Oakland Invaders can get the football into the end zone rather quickly, we get to nail-biting time at mile high. And there's a good possibility that's going to happen. All in all, it's been a great football game. You know, I've seen, this is my third time I've seen a game or th three games, and they've all been outstanding games, and I've really enjoyed doing them. I think it's a game that uh, the fans are enjoying. Uh, the ratings across the country are signifying that people enjoy watching on TV and listening to it on radio, so it's a, it's a great thing to be a part of this. Now, if Mother Nature would cooperate yes. with uh, the USFL and Chet Simmons, and if Shelby Whitfield will stop showing up at these games, maybe we get some good weather. Well, you know, we, we bring Shelby's name up because Shelby is the executive producer, and he, he has the sometimes unenviable task of, of being on the road so many days during the week, and it seems whenever Shelby shows up for the football game, the clouds and the rain follow him. And he's to my left shaking his head up and down, yes, sir, yes, sir. I got a letter the other day that said, Dear Shelby, please do not come to Hawaii. <laughs> One minute and 55 seconds left of this football game. We set the picture for you now. The ball is at the 25-yard line of the Denver goal. The Oakland Invaders who trail in the ball game, 22 to 12, have the football. Freddie Bassana, who can throw the ball all over the ball yard, will have Wyatt Henderson in the ball game. He will have Raymond Chester to throw to, and Gordon Banks. Henderson, wide to the right side, going wide left, Gordon Banks. The end in tight on the right side is Raymond Chester, who has been the favorite target of Freddie Bassano all evening. Bassano with backs put behind him in the backfield. On the second and two from the 25 of Denver, Bassano will drop the throw. Sets up at the 34. Lobs it out left flat to Arthur Whittington. Whittington has the reception. A flag down. Whittington goes out of bounds at the 20-yard line with a first down. Will Lewis ran him out, but there is a flag down at the 15-yard line. And the penalties that had been going against the Oakland Invaders early in this football game and early in the second half may be reversing themselves as the Denver Gold having a tough time keeping the flag in the pocket of the official. A little personal foul on Denver Gold. I think they got uh, caught for uh, what you call uh, a little clothesline in the wide receiver that time. Well, David Martin earlier. Well, taken out of the ball game because of a personal foul. And now we have another foul tacked on. A personal foul bringing the ball to the 10-yard line. First and goal to goal for the Oakland Invaders. They're making this game exciting, aren't they? Well, that's what the people come to see that's is exciting right. football. Well, they're getting their money's worth tonight. The Invaders break their huddle. Wide left, we have two receivers, Henderson and Banks. End in tight on the right side is Raymond Chester. 1.49 to go in this football game. First and goal to go for the Oakland Invaders from the Denver Gold Tab. Bassano with the back split behind him in the backfield. Will throw, sets up at the 18. At the time, now pressure being applied. Rolls out of the pressure. Bassana on his hands and knocks it out of bounds. A super play by the right defensive end, Calvin Turner. you got to have those kind of plays when you're really you're fighting for your life down there, and he made a great play for the Denver Gold. It will now be second and goal to go 
for the Invaders from the Denver 10-yard line. 1.41 to play. The clock stops on the incompletion. 22 to 12, Denver leading Oakland. The Invaders trying to get the ball into the end zone. Henderson wide right, Banks wide left. End in tight on the right side is Chester. Vasana drops the throw. Rolling out of pressure. Drives a pass right side to Tarosian. Tarosian with the reception of the six and is stopped there immediately. A sidearm completion from Freddy Vasana will set up a third and goal to go for Oakland from the five yard line of the Denver goal. Bearfield and Miller on the stop for the Denver goal. How he got that ball away, I'll never know because that was a sidearm underarm throw. Clock rolling, 1-15 to 15 to go in this ball game. They, that offensive line is going to give him a little bit more protection. First and goal, or I should say third and goal from the five for Oakland. Masana rolling out of pressure to the right side. Into the end zone with a pass. Oh, Overthrown, intended for a wide open Wyatt Henderson in the center of the end zone. Henderson all by himself. Masana being pressured by Larry White and Greg Gerken. Rob the ball too high over the outstretched arms of the 5'10", Wyatt Henderson. And we will have fourth and goal to go from the five of Denver for the Oakland Invaders. That is, you know, Fred, that's probably the first bad throw he's made all night. Because he had him wide open. Pardon me? Under a minute to go in the ball game now. Well, this is their last chance. Fans here in Denver, many of them on their feet. Some had started making their way to the exits a couple of minutes ago, stopped dead in their tracks along the, the side here. Fourth and goal to go for Oakland from the five of Denver. 59 seconds to go in the ball game. Quarterback Fasano looking to the end zone, into the end zone with a throw. The Denver Gold will take over first and ten from their own five-yard line with 55 seconds to go in the ball game, and you can bet that with the ball at the five, Brett Miller will instruct his quarterback to play it very safe and just to give to the sure-handed guys, and maybe even keep it himself on a couple of states. It'll be the old quarterback keeper quickly to the ground. Well, it makes for an interesting Pacific Division now that the Denver goals won. Everybody's two and two. So that uh, puts the race back in perspective and everybody has this, you know, its chance. It's just like to start all over again. The Denver Gold winning their last two ball games. Kenny Johnson. First and ten for the gold from their own five. He gets it to Harry Sidney and Sidney hits the line of scrimmage and it is whacked down by Gary Plummer and Dewey McLean. And I do mean whack. And we have a timeout will have for the Denver goal is they just want that clock to run down. We have Larry Canada right off the, the tail of quarterback uh, Kenny Johnson bunched up tight. Johnson gets the snap and he just falls forward. Well, Mr. Morton, it looks like if things were to go sour for Red Miller and his Denver goal, they've found at least another quarterback to pick on here in Denver, haven't they? <laughs> Johnson, huh? It would be Denver unless you had a quarterback problem. I never thought we had a quarterback problem when I was here. <laughs> Nobody agreed with me. But... Well, the Denver Gold players raising their hands in victory. The fans of the stand standing and cheering the gold as the clock rolls home to another victory for the Denver Gold. The teams will walk 